Good evening. Now have seven o'clock. We have uh, the Charter Township of Planning Commission meeting for our regular meeting for Wednesday, November 16th. And we are at the Orient Township Municipal Complex boardroom at 2323 Jocelyn Road. Um, can I have a roll call, please? Here. 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 Thank you very much. Lynn, I don't know if your voice is getting picked up on the microphone, by the way. Thank you. Um, all right, this evening we do have a joint public hearing with the Board of Trustees for a PUD, um, hence why the Board of Trustees is sitting on our left or your right this evening. Um, I will go over uh, kind of general rules here. Um, remind everyone, if you are here present tonight, if you could please sign in out in the lobby with your name and address. Um, during the public hearing process, what will occur is essentially the public hearing is for us to gain comments about the, the PUD that's been proposed. Um, everyone has an opportunity to speak at the podium. Um, this is held jointly with ourselves and the Board of Trustees to help the applicant in the process. The PUD process is a multi-phase process. Um, there is a public hearing. There is the initial phase of concept and eligibility, um, and then later on, site plan. In, in between that is uh, ourselves, the Planning Commission is a recommending body, so we uh, strictly hear and make a recommendation to the Board of Trustees. Since a PUD is amending um, a zoning component of our uh, ordinance here in the township, um, it's a multi-step process. So once uh, we continue forth with a meeting, the public hearing will be held at 7.05. At that time, I'll ask the Board of Trustees to open uh, their portion of the meeting uh, with the public hearing. Uh, we'll ask the petitioner to make a brief presentation um, for a general overview of, of the project. We'll ask uh, citizens to make their way up to the podium if you have comments or questions. Um, on the back of everyone's agenda this evening, there's the general overview of how a public hearing here at the township works. This is how all of our public hearings occur. We ask each speaker to limit themselves to three minutes and one trip up to the podium. Um, all of those uh, questions or comments will be directed to myself as the chair. Um, it is not to be directed to the petitioner or frankly anyone else in this room. Um, and we would ask you to start uh, your questions, comments, concerns with uh, your name and address so we can have it for our records, please. Um, would like to remind everyone that um, this is uh, a process in which all projects go through and we offer everyone the equal opportunity to speak their mind and express their support or lack of support for a project. So please refrain um, from clapping, hooting, hollering, um, and speaking out of turn so we can make sure everyone has the opportunity to speak and have their opportunities be heard. Um, general overview is uh, there is not a, a back and forth during the public hearing process. This project will appear later on in our agenda this evening for further deliberation, um, but essentially the uh, public hearing process is an information gathering phase is how I uh, make that comment. So now that we have a few minutes between now and the ability to open up our public hearing as advertised, we'll continue forth with our regular agenda. Starting with uh, item number three in our agenda, we have our October 19th Planning Commission regular meeting minutes along with um, our meeting minutes from our township initiated text amendment. Is there any motion uh, or discussion? Uh, Mr. Chair, I move to approve the Planning Commission regular meeting minutes from October 19th, 2022, and the Planning Commission Public Hearing Minutes, PC 22-35, Township Initiated Text Amendment, Performance Guarantees. Uh, I have motion by Mrs. Urbanowski, support by Mr. Walker. Further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, any public discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please state with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. Item number four on our agenda is our review and approval of our agenda. Do I have a motion or discussion? Move to approve the agenda as submitted. Motion to have support. Support. Support by Mrs. Gingell, moved by Mrs. Urbanowski. Any further discussion on that motion? Any public discussion on the motion? <clears throat> Seeing none, all those in favor, please state with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. Uh, last but not least, before we open our public hearing, we'll move to item number five for brief public comment on non-agenda items only. Is there anyone here in the audience that would like to make any comments on non-agenda items this evening? Seeing no one racing up to the podium, 
We'll move right along and we have no consent agenda items this evening, so we will move forward with our public hearing process. Uh, with that said, we now have uh, 7.05. We went over the, the general rules of the um, <clears throat> public hearing. This is a joint public hearing with the Board of Trustees held at 7.05 for PC Case 22-39, Hudson Square Plain Unit Development, also known as a PUD, located at 3030 South Lapeer Road, Sidwell 0926-101-021. The applicant, the applicant Dr. John Canine is proposing, proposing to rezone the property from single family residential R2 to conditional general business uh, and, sorry, conditional general business GB to plan unit development to construct a mixed use development with a freestanding drive through coffee shop, sit down restaurant attached to a classic car club and a multifamily residential uh, component in six buildings with a total of 26 or 24 units. My apologies, 24 units. Uh, with that said, if uh, we're going to adjourn our meeting at 7.06, would the Board of Trustees like to uh, open up their meeting? Sure, thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening. I'd like to call to order the special meeting of the Orient Shadow Township Board of Trustees for November 16th at 7.06. Um, we'll, I'll call the roll as our clerk is absent with notice. Um, Trustee Flood. Present. Treasurer Steele. Trustee Urbanowski here. is still here. Thank you. Uh, Chris Barnett is here. Uh, Trustee Dalrymple and Bernie are both also absent uh, with notice, but we do have a quorum. Okay, thank you very much. With that said, at 7.06, I would like to open the public hearing, and if the petitioner is available to make a presentation, you may now step up to the podium. Please state your name and address uh, for the record, please. I suppose I can get the first part out of the way. My name is Michael Wayne, and my address is 3250 Auburn Road, Auburn House, Michigan. Excellent. Okay, good evening. It is a pleasure to be with you tonight. Uh, as I said, my name is Michael Wayne. I'm we just do me a favor and make sure the microphone is picking you up. If you can't really hear yourself in the, the speakers, you're, we're not going to have you on record. <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry. You are taller. Right, so. We'll lean down. We got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned, partner with Detroit Riverside Capital, and we are here tonight to share with you a proposal that cultivates the vision of the Orient Township Master Plan and uh, practices responsible development on a currently underutilized parcel. So we're excited to share that with you tonight. Now, you may recognize me, and that is with a good reason, but something that I would love to make very clear tonight is that this is not the Woodlands. This proposal has nothing to do with the Woodlands, and it is a completely separate project. Now, the adjoining 20 acres that was previously part of the Woodlands proposal is not a part of this proposal, and we have no intention to combine this with the adjacent parcel. So I just wanted to make that clear for members of the board, the commission, and the public. Um, but the history of this <coughs> site is interesting because following the Woodlands proposal, Dr. Kanine was left with the choice what to do with his land. Now he met with various members of the township and um, through those meetings created some ideas and the output of those ideas are what we have here tonight. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So um, the existing subject parcel is 7.2. 07 acres. It's located on the northwest corner of Lapeer and Walden, and um, the address is 3030 South Lapeer Road. Now, the current zoning of the parcel is split between general business and R2 single family. Um, we are bordered to the south by OP1, to the east by RM1, uh, to the north by R2, although the current land use is institutional, church being built there, and then north of that is RM1 as well. And to our west is additional R2 residential. Now, as we sit here today, this project is currently approved on this site. <clears throat> this project features 26,000 total square feet of office space, as well as a 4,000 square foot uh, freestanding restaurant. 
and you can see those um, facade images and renderings there. Now, the majority of office space is being built on spec to complement the car club, but in a post-pandemic environment, the demand for office space has completely fallen off a cliff. As an example, in Oakland County, there's 54 million square feet of office space in total. Currently, 24% of that office space is vacant. That leaves 12 million square feet of office space in Oakland County currently vacant. Safe to say, not a good time to build spec office space. But there was also another challenge facing this site. And that was the adjacent three acres that by building the subject parcel really limited um, the future development potential of the property to the west. And so <clears throat> when faced with the economic challenges of office as well as the underutilized land, uh, Dr. Kanai knew that he needed to rethink his approach on this site. So we collaborated with Dr. Knine and created Hudson Square. And <clears throat> we feel that Hudson Square is a um, tremendous project that meets the relevant needs of the community today as compared to what's currently approved. Now, the Hudson Square site plan has four main components. Uh, in the southeast is the restaurant, which is also attached to the car club. In the northeast is the drive through Bigby Coffee. And then to the west is the Four Lease Residential. Now, between all of these uses, we need a total of 128 parking spaces, of which we're providing 130. So parking is certainly not an issue. Now, every PUD must bring along with it public benefits, and Hudson Square has numerous. Uh, many of those were mentioned by the Giffels-Webster review, which you'll hear about later tonight. A couple of those benefits include the preservation of natural features. So you can see on the southwest portion of the site, we have a beautiful water feature, and that was certainly key in our site design was to preserve and to not disturb uh, that wetland area. Furthermore, Walden Road features a beautiful tree line as you're driving towards Lapeer, and it was really important to us that we preserve that tree line and uh, in doing so, we did not create any access <clears throat> from the property to Walden Road so as to not disturb that beautiful sight line. Hudson Square also brings improvements in public safety through additional construction of safety paths. Now, <clears throat> um, of course, this is beneficial just for our site alone, but when you look at the macro situation, there's an existing safety path that runs about 3,000 feet north to south uh, just south of Summerfield Condo Community, all the way up to the Home Depot. Now, that stretch of safety path doesn't currently connect with the existing three-mile path that's to the west along Walden Road in between Lapeer Road and Baldwin. So Hudson Square will provide for the connection of almost four miles worth of safety path, um, which, again, today are currently inaccessible to one another. So we think that's a, an, an added uh, tidbit that's pretty cool as far as safety path is concerned. Now, as I mentioned, open space and nature preservation was important to us. So open space is another public benefit. We've been able to generate 40% of the site to remain as open space. And this is more than double what the ordinance requires. High quality architectural design is another public benefit listed in the PD application. And it certainly is applicable to Hudson Square. Between the commercial and residential uses, we've identified facade materials that are not only high quality and durable, but also very aesthetically pleasing. And that's represented in some of the elevations and renderings that you'll see tonight. Last but not least, my favorite public benefit is the public art feature, which is proposed at the southeast corner of the site. Uh, this is a 10 acre patio space that will be centered by a public art piece. Now we'll collaborate with um, some of the various art institutions, perhaps the DIA, to come up with a uh, sculpture design and then propose that for approval to the necessary township boards. Um, but we feel like this is just a really great way to accent a popular corner and display um, a cool cornerstone piece that can be representative of Warren Township. Now, as we know, assessing a PUD's compliance with the master plan is critical. So um, one of the ways to do that, of course, is to look at the future land use designation. This site on the west portion is high density residential in the master plan, and on the east portion is general business. The master plan also calls for higher density residential near commercial thoroughfares. Of course, that applies here. Um, it looks for missing middle housing types, which it specifically names quadplexes as one of those. And that's what we're presenting here tonight. 
Uh, it calls for clustering of residential units around natural features and open space. I've explained how that's achieved by this site plan. And lastly, it mentions that commercial corridors uh, should be placed along major thoroughfares. Of course, we are on the most major thoroughfare in the township. <clears throat> now, the Giffel's uh, review letter notes a number of these, um, and they issue that, or I'm sorry, and they, they state that uh, the project is con uh, generally consistent with the master plan and future land use. So <clears throat> we certainly agree. And with this project, there are four key components. The first is Sweet Amy's Eating House. This is a 4,000 square foot upscale restaurant, which has over 1,000 square feet of outdoor dining space. Then we have Big B Coffee, which is a 1,700 square foot uh, drive through quick service restaurant. We have the Oring Classic Car Club, which sits at 3,000 square feet and, again, is connected to the restaurant. And then lastly, the 24 residential four lease units. So we are going to break down each of these components, and to do so, I'd like to ask Amy Harris, the owner of Sweet Amy's and Big B Coffee, to come up and share a few words. As Michael said, my name is Amy Harris. Uh, my address is 943 Waters Meat Drive, Oxford, Michigan. Uh, I've lived in the area for 10 years. All four of our adult children went to Lake Orion High School. Um, so we're more affiliated with Lake Orion than we technically are with Oxford. And then I own Sweet Amy's uh, Eating House. I owned Sweet Amy's Eating House in Orion Township for six years. So just a little history about me. Uh, I worked in restaurants for seven years throughout high school uh, and throughout college, putting myself through college. Um, then I went into advertising um, and pursued a working at, for 18 years at uh, larger advertising ag agencies, managing multi-million dollar um, automotive, casino, and healthcare accounts. After those 18 years, I got burnout on basically corporate America, um, and I always had a desire to open a healthy restaurant. My family eats very healthy and clean, and my daughter has 10 plus anaphylactic food allergies. No restaurants in the area can truly accommodate her allergies. So we did some research and found that there was a need for a healthy, primarily non-GMO uh, restaurant in the area that does accommodate uh, individuals with special dietary restrictions. <coughs> so we decided to open up Honest to Goodness Breakfast and Smoothies in May of 2016. That evolved into Sweet Amy's Eating House uh, during COVID uh, as people were not uh, so apt to go out for breakfast. So we had to pivot and change our primary focus to uh, lunches and dinners, um, still serving our um, breakfast food that we, we were known for. Um, we were an award-winning restaurant for six years. We won various awards, everything from best breakfast to best lunch in the local advertiser and review, and as well um, in the open press. And we consistently were rated 4.5 and higher on all social, social media. <coughs> With heavy heart, we had to make a decision to close our doors on January 30th of, of this year due, due to the everlasting effects of COVID. We were not able to create any kitchen crew, um, and we tried for over six months um, with no avail. Um, so we had to make a hard decision and take a break and close at that location. However, the intent was always to open in a better location, um, and we've been interested in partnering, partnering with Dr. John Kennard <coughs> for years. Um, <clears throat> it just recently came to realization that we were going to be part of this Hudson Square plan um, within the last year. An additional note, two years ago, I was diagnosed with celiac. Between myself and my daughter's allergies, we understand the challenges that the community and people with special dietary restrictions go through on a daily basis. There's literally nowhere in town where I can feel comfortable dining um, or my daughter that she won't have a severe allergic reaction and end up in the hospital. Restaurants say they can accommodate, <coughs> but the reality is most can't. Therefore, I've always felt Sweet Amy's was my way of kind of giving back and helping others in the community that go through similar challenges. As mentioned above, we did previously own Sweet Amy's Eating House that was located at 1166 
South Lapeer Road in Orion Township. Uh, it was located in the Sherwin-Williams Plaza, uh, just north of OSB across from Planet Fitness. We developed quite a following as we were a scratch kitchen, 90% non-GMO, um, and as mentioned, accommodated special diets such as celiac, vegetarians, vegans, and did our best to accommodate those with uh, anaphylactic food allergies. In our kitchen, we would utilize only the highest ingredients, uh, such as nitrate-free bre breakfast meats, cage-free eggs, grass-fed beef, wild-caught salmon, um, and as much organic dairy and produce that we could. All of our sauces, pancake mixes, salad dressings were um, all made from scratch, handmade. Uh, just as an example, we had three, three varieties of our pancake mix, organic buttermilk, gluten-free, dairy-free, and a vegan mix made without eggs and dairy. So we take our aller allergies very seriously. On that note, we had a separate gluten-free griddle, gluten-free fryer that only touched potatoes, uh, a gluten-free toaster, and a gluten-free prep area uh, to avoid contamination with gluten and other major allergens. Many of our breakfast, lunch, and dinner options are naturally gluten-free since we are making items from scratch. Some of our local favorites <clears throat> were gluten-free, dairy-free carrot cake pancakes, gluten-free eggs over ham hash, gluten-free vegan hash, grass-fed burger slider that had an option for uh, uh, gluten-free slider bun, and 100% gluten-free fry varieties. This new Sweet Amy's restaurant would follow suit with the same scratch kitchen model that accommodates special diets. However, this restaurant will be primarily focused on dinners offering uh, with a brunch offering on the weekends. So in the renderings, um, it shows, it displays that we have a four, 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 uh, proposing a 4,000 square foot building with a 1,000 square foot mezzanine above it for VIP social gathering space. It would have a minimum of 1,000 square foot patio surrounded by beautiful foliage that overlooks the pond. There will be lots of glass, so even those dining from inside will be able to enjoy the beautiful scenery. The overall look will be upscale in nature. Two unique aspects of our restaurant to the area would be the fact that we're going to have a private dining room, um, fishbowl style, so it will be open, surrounded by like wine on the walls. Um, and uh, we are going to have uh, soft seating in the front all the way to the probably the middle of the restaurant where there will be sofas and tables and chairs so people can come and gather, uh, socialize you know, over appetizers and hors d'oeuvres. And in addition, we're going to have a window that showcases um, and displays one of those luxury classic cars that Dr. John Canine would have in his car club. Truly nothing like it from an ambiance perspective, along with food offerings in our area. You would need to drive to southern Oakland County or Detroit to find something comparable. Hence, we are excited to bring the second rendition of Sweet Amy's to Lake Orion. There is a need, as I said, for Sweet Amy's number two in Lake Orion. Additionally, there is a need for another coffee ven venue in Lake Orion. And we would like to additionally bring uh, Big B Coffee to the area. Why? There's currently no Big B Coffee locations in Lake Orion. The closest Big B cafes are in Metamora, which is 16.3 miles away, 27 minutes north, and in Auburn Hills, 4.5 miles away, 9 minutes southwest. Additionally, there is no coffee venue with a drive through once you pass Tim Hortons on Lapeer Road, and Tim Hortons is 2.6 miles away. The closest non drive through coffee shop is Lava Mountain, which is 1.7 miles away. Our new big <coughs> cafe will fill a void of a somewhat coffee desert, desert area for morning commuters, especially for those moms with young children or, the, or those in a hurry looking for a quick, convenient drive through venue. For those that drive Lapeer Road every day, you can't help but notice the backed up uh, traffic at Starbucks and Tim Hortons, <clears throat> where the traffic wraps around the road. This will help alleviate that backup by, by providing another coffee venue. For those looking for a place to have a business meeting or to work remotely, there will be a cafe available for you. For those not familiar with Big B, <clears throat> they offer a wide array of unique coffee drinks and hot and cold beverages such as Big B Blast energy drinks. Big B also serves items such as Bregel sandwiches and baked goods. That the Bregel sandwiches are assembled <clears throat> in-house. Because of my personal issue with celiac, uh, I am passionate about adding a gluten-free component into Big B's model. 
we're currently working with a local baker that can potentially produce mass quantities uh, to see if we can make this happen. I would be remiss if I did not mention the fact that Bigby is a Michigan-based company. The first Bigby Cafe originated in Lansing, Michigan in 1985, <coughs> and its headquarters is based there till this day. <clears throat> Regarding the rendering and uh, the image, that is of an existing uh, Bigby Cafe that uh, resides in Allegan County, or in Allegan, Michigan, um, and ours will look very similar to that. So for all these reasons and more, we feel the addition of this Big B Cafe with the drive through will be a positive addition to the community. Okay, well, thank you, Amy. <clears throat> so our third component is the Orion Classic Car Club. Now, this should look familiar as this was a concept that was approved by this commission previously. What's most critical about it is that it really is a one-of-a-kind destination. It's about more than storing cars. This is really a community um, <coughs> that these <coughs> gentlemen and ladies share love for cars over and use it to create that community and to socialize. So again, nothing like this in the township currently and um, certainly creates a unique asset. Now for our fourth component, <coughs> um, we are presenting the Hudson Valley Hudson Valley is consistent of um, six independent buildings with four homes in each. Now these are two-story structures, so maximum height uh, measured to the midpoint of the roof line is about 27 feet. <clears throat> so we know that height is critical and that was a key element of this design. Um, now each building has two two-bedroom units on the first floor, over 1,100 square feet of living space plus a 420 square foot garage area and a 200 square foot outdoor patio. Take a short trip up the steps and you'll arrive at the three bedroom units located on the second floor. Uh, those enjoy 1,600 square feet of living space plus a 420 square foot garage and over a 400 square foot rooftop patio, which sits over top of that garage. <clears throat> now, the variation between the two and three bedrooms allows us to attract a wide range of demographics in terms of renter base. We really envision two primary demographics for these homes. First would be young families. So picture a married couple, maybe with a dog and a kid on the way, might be in between housing options, maybe not quite ready to buy a home. This serves as a perfect way to keep those people in the community and give them a housing type <clears throat> that is conducive to their needs. The second would be, say, a late baby boomer generation. So perhaps empty nesters, uh, free of kids, looking for a hassle-free, maintenance-free living environment. Uh, this serves perfectly for those demographics. And now keep in mind that these residential dwellings are very high end and the rental rates on these dwellings will be comparable to uh, the monthly mortgage payments of many homes in the surrounding areas. Um, and so this demonstrates that the demographic will blend, will blend nicely with the existing landscape. Another cool feature of the Hudson Valley design is that all garages are side entry. This means that from the front facade view as you walk down the street, uh, no garages are visible. This really gives it a um, quaint neighborhood feel, and it's something that we're really excited about. Um, one other night, uh, one other item of note would be that half the homes are handicap accessible, so um, this is also something that we are proud of. And when we compare this product type to others in the area, uh, we found a very similar example, and that would be at the Summerfield condo community. This property is just to the north of the proposed site, and these are two-story uh, townhomes or condos, I'm sorry, that were built in the early 2000s. <clears throat> now, you can see that the similarities are strong between the two structures, both from a height perspective as well as a general overall architecture, mass, and scale. <clears throat> now, this demonstrates how the proposed residential is going to blend nicely with the existing landscape in the area. <clears throat> it is worth noting that we do not immediately abut the Summerfield condo community, so this is purely for an example of an, uh, a similar product type in the surrounding area, but there's no visual connection between our property and that. Now this is a slide that we've seen before, but with good reason. Uh, this problem still exists today in Orion Township. There is a tremendous need for residential housing options in the community, and the existing ones are at their capacity. So in order for the township to continue to grow responsibly, uh, must add housing options of this type to support this need. 
And the graph on the left is really a demonstration of this problem being created. This is the number of units built over the last 60 years. Now, if we draw our attention specifically to since 2000, we've only seen 353 Ford lease residential dwellings built in the township, despite 15% population growth over that same period. So clearly a big need in the community today. Now the graph on the right demonstrates uh, when apartments are built in Orion Township, they lease up immediately. So you can see that in 2014 as well as 2019. There's a couple of key areas that we wanted to make sure we addressed head on. The first of which is density and public resources. Now from a commercial density perspective, our proposal is 21,000 square feet less of total commercial space as compared to the already approved site plan. We've reduced that density by 71% in this proposal. <clears throat> now from a residential perspective, the future land use on the parcel is high density residential. This means three to five dwelling units per acre, of course. We are proposing six. <clears throat> so this meets the intent of the future land use of high density residential. Now, if we assume for the sake of example, one extra unit um, per acre on a four acre site, we're only asking for a total of four additional units compared <clears throat> to the underlying future land use permitted density. Now, if we take this a step further and assume that there's two people per one of those dwelling units, that's a total of eight additional heartbeats for public resources like police, fire, and EMS to manage. I think we can all agree that that's a negligible amount to add to the service network. And one last note on density is that um, the RM1 density category of six units per acre is what we're proposing. Now this exact zoning designation, as mentioned, exists to the east, to the north, and also uh, partially two to the south. So we're in good company as far as the RM1 category is concerned. Now in terms of stormwater management, one of the most critical aspects of every development is to effectively manage that stormwater and ensure that it has no negative effects on surrounding properties. We're going to do so through an underground series of catch basins um, with underground storage on site. Now, first and foremost, we're going to work with OHM to ensure that our design meets the ordinance. This is the same ordinance that, of course, is designed to prevent this exact issue from happening. And so trust that through collaboration with OHM, we'll develop a design um, that has been thoroughly reviewed and confirmed that it meets the standards of the ordinance. Now, OHM acknowledges in the review letter that the stormwater on this site flows to the southeast. The southeast corner of the Hudson Square proposal is the corners of Walden and Lapeer Roads. So there are no properties to the east for any of our stormwater to flow onto. By the contrary, all the properties surrounding us are flowing towards our property. And so <clears throat> this really eliminates the potential of our site depositing any stormwater or disturbing any surrounding property as a result. Now, as it relates to site circulation and traffic, um, this was a key component to our site design. I mentioned that we did not provide access through Walden Road. This was deliberate for two reasons. The first I mentioned, which was to preserve the tree line, but the second was to not deposit any new traffic volume onto the Walden Road um, roadway. <clears throat> we understand that there's some existing concerns over traffic at this intersection, and we believe that Hudson Square could potentially be the impetus to solve this problem through collaborating with MDOT. So we've submitted a traffic study to the township. It's currently in review. And we've also submitted this study uh, to MDOT. And we look forward to working with MDOT to develop whatever mitigation requirements MDOT deems necessary, um, we are willing and able to provide. So we look forward to that process to ensure that we're mitigating <clears throat> traffic congestion to the fullest extent. Now lastly, I've mentioned nature preservation a couple times tonight. It was a really critical piece of our design. This slide demonstrates where that 40% open space comes from. So in large part, um, the natural water, water feature, but also the buffering surrounding the site uh, gets us to that 40% open space. Now of that 40%, well, I'm sorry, of the total, roughly 30% will be completely preserved in its natural habitat. And lastly, we're bringing walking trails to the natural features. So existing, um, they're completely inaccessible, and so through the construction of both our safety paths as well as our interior site circulation, uh, these natural features will be able to be enjoyed by residents, uh, customers of businesses, and the community alike. Now, 
Well, after all, we are at a public hearing. And so <clears throat> we wanted to share some feedback that we got from the virtual town square of Facebook. Uh, our proposal was posted on the Orion Township Facebook group, as well as a couple various other groups um, within the community. And you can see the results were overwhelmingly positive. Almost 500 total likes between the posts, um, over 250 total comments. And <clears throat> when we compare the positive comments to the negative comments, uh, we see about 96% positivity for the project. So clearly hundreds <coughs> of your community members have spoke and 96% of them um, were supportive of this project. And so with that, I would like to thank you for your time and attention. And I look forward, look forward to hearing the feedback from yourselves in the community. Thank you very much. <clears throat> At this point in time, um, we will turn it over to anyone from the public who is present here tonight who would like to uh, speak at the public hearing. Um, if you would like to speak, remind you if you could limit yourself to uh, three minutes, I will be keeping time. Um, we're taking notes up here, so if there's been something mentioned previously, um, we will have that in our notes uh, when we further yeah. deliberate on the project. Yeah. So with that, I'll ask the petitioner to take a seat so public can make their way up to the podium. Uh, at this time, um, if, you, if someone wants to step up, state your name and address. Uh, state your name and address for the record, please. And if um, there's more to speak, you can feel free to kind of line up behind uh, just a little bit of distance and you know, maybe a couple, two or three people at a time and make this uh, as quick as we can. So with that said, you have the floor. Hi, my name's Tracy Duman. I live at 270 Walden Road. I am the west property adjacent to the proposed property. So um, I really appreciate Mr. Wayne's, uh, how he addressed a lot of our concerns. Um, the three main points that I heard today was that there's no intent to combine the adjacent parcel behind my property. So I was very impressed by that. I hope that stands true. Um, the next one is that there's no access off of Walden Road. Now, currently, there is an unofficial driveway on Walden Road already, and there's a mailbox there. So my question is, will that be blocked? Um, and then also, I sorry, I get so nervous. <laughs> um, and then I appreciate the, pres the preservation of the tree line on Walden Road. So here's my personal concerns on my property. Um, I hope that we can keep the tree line and the berm that's on the west side of the road or I'm sorry, on the west side of the property, so adjacent to mine. It will provide light pollution coverage, so like it will block the light and privacy from the, the apartments. And then um, also there was a big fence there, and that was put up intentionally, and I wanna make sure we keep that fence. Because you know, as you know, I have my half acre pond, and it could be a liability problem with me with an apartment um, next to me. Um, and of course, I'm worried about the traffic, I'm very, very worried about the traffic and the water runoff. So those are my concerns. So thank you. Thank you for your comments. Hi, my name is Al Hassinger. I live at 1600 South Baldwin Road in Brandon Township, and I am a property owner in Lake Orion Village. And I just wanted to say that getting to know Amy and Scott and really admiring their entrepreneurial spirit um, wanting to pick up again where they had had to leave off through no fault of their own and bring a fantastic business uh, businesses uh, to Lake Orion. I think it would be a tremendous addition and a great gateway into and out of the, uh, the town. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Matt Milenich. I live at 4014 Sunfish Drive in Lapeer. And I wish I could be as eloquent as these people and speak off the cuff instead of having to read from a paper, so I apologize. So again, my name is Matt Milenich, and I'm here to speak on behalf of the business ventures of Scott and Amy Harris. First, I would like to say that I wholeheartedly support the business ventures that Scott and Amy are undertaking. My wife and I are regular patrons of the Lake Orion community and would love to see an upscale restaurant added to your dining community. As a patron of Scott and Amy's previous restaurant, I can speak from experience about the quality of food and service that was provided. Everything was created with the highest standards in terms of the food that was used, the presentation of the food, the taste of the food, which for me is the most important, and the service in which it was provided. 
I truly believe that adding an upscale restaurant to your community ran by Scott and Amy would be beneficial to all and ran successfully. I also believe that adding another coffee venue to Lake Orion community would be beneficial as well. I know that there are plenty of places to get coffee in Lake Orion, but to my knowledge, there are only two venues with the drive through services. I believe adding another coffee um, uh, place with the drive through services uh, would benefit the members of your community and those who travel through your city every day simply due to convenience. I've known Scott my entire life and his wife for many years now. In terms of Scott, I don't think there's anyone who can, sp or who can talk about his character better than me except for his parents or his wife. Scott is the most dedicated, hardworking person that I know. It doesn't matter if it's in his professional or personal life. If there's something that needs to be done, there's nothing that would stop Scott from doing it. Um, I also saw the drive and dedication that Scott and Amy put into their previous business venture. The amount of sacrifice and time they put into their restaurant shows their willingness to do whatever it takes to be successful in their ventures. There's no doubt in my mind that approving these two ventures will be beneficial to the Lake Orion community. Thank you for your time. Thank Have a you. good evening. My name is John Slocum and I live at 3066 Walden Meadows Drive off Walden Meadow Road. Could you step up a little closer to the, the microphone for me, please? Thank you very much. Okay. And um, I'm just um, a personal friend uh, got killed in Lapeer last year. So I lost a very dear friend from England. And um, it's a very dangerous road. Um, I have nothing against the project. I hope it works. But I hope the city um, does something about the traffic situation because more traffic will mean it's harder to get up the Walden <coughs> Drive. Um, I go out onto Walden Road sometimes and some people are frozen in terror. They just sit there. There's like 14, 16, 18 people trying to get out. I know it's nothing to do with the development, but we already have a dangerous situation. I've lost a personal friend, and I'll never be the same after it. His name was Tony. And so I just hope that in partnership with, with these people that you put a traffic light in or you, under mitigation, I understand there's details. I'd like to know what the details are and that we can make it all work and less dangerous for people. Understood. Thank you for your comments. Thank you so much. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Glassford. I live at 389 Hunters Rill. Um, I'd like to start off with saying I've been in the food industry for 10 years, and I've been an operating partner for six in the food industry. Um, what I have noticed is it is impossible to fully accommodate um, to severe allergies. Um, and with the... Um, out like the model she has, um, it can 100% suffice multiple allergies, and I feel like that'll really create a positive buzz for the community um, because it's something that not everybody offers. Um, with that being said, um, I also do drive down the Pier Road um, southbound towards 75. Um, the few coffee places that do have a drive-through are um, very busy in the morning, and I feel like um, adding the Big B would be um, great, it, great spot, great location, and um, definitely uh, the customers to pull from. Um, from a personal level, um, I did move out to Lake Orion a couple of years ago. Um, when I was looking, I was looking for about a two to three bedroom, two bathroom, um, with amenities as a washer and dryer, and it was very difficult um, to find availability in the area. It actually took me over six months and I had to pay double rent for four of those months just to ensure I had a place locked in. Um, so I feel like adding those residential properties to the community would definitely be a po positive for the community as well. Um, and as far as um, the ownership, you know, a great customer service. Um, I feel like having owners that live in the community um, is very positive when it comes to retention um, when it comes to profitability and and just maintenance you know maintaining um, just just maintaining the area as well so I just thank you for your time and I appreciate you yeah thank you hello um, 
Um, my name is Emily Glassford. I live at 24 Leslie Lane in Waterford, Michigan. Um, I have a lot of family in the Lake Orion Oxford area, so I am frequently out here. Um, I was a patron often at Sweet Amy's restaurant, and since um, they had a shutdown, it's been hard. A lot of my family um, does have very, very severe food allergies. Um, it, it's hard going to restaurants and feeling safe enough to have them eat there without, you know, wondering if we're going to have to end up in the hospital because of an anaphylactic issue. Um, so I am extremely happy to hear that um, Amy Harris and Scott Harris are trying to make another location. Um, our family has really missed it. So, thank you for your comment. Thank you. <coughs> Hi, my name is Linda Martin Sang. I live at six six two five Shelley Drive in Clarkston. Um, my husband and I both have food allergies, and especially my husband's, his are pretty severe. And we've been patrons of Sweet Amy's um, for many years, and we really trust the owners to take the care that is necessary to make food that is safe for us to eat. And my husband, in particular, won't be sick for a week after eating there. Um, their food is delicious. It's well presented, and the owners are wonderful. The people that all work there were wonderful. We really have missed it also since they've been gone. Um, also, as for the Big B coffee, um, I'm not a Starbucks fan. I like Big B way better, and there is always a line at the Starbucks on Lapeer Road. You can't get in. It backs up onto Lapeer Road. Um, so I think another coffee shop with a drive through would be a real benefit to the area. We also bring lots of family members to their facility. We did our Mother's Day there one year, um, and we then go into Lake Orion and do shopping. So we bring business to the area as well. So, um, and I do know a lot of other people. My friend from Rochester loves their restaurant. She eats there. My friend from Royal Oak drives up here and eats at their restaurant. So I, I think it would just be a benefit to the community overall. And I love their love them as people and also their food. So thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Hi. My name is Kelly Mahelich and I live at 275 Walden Road. Uh, over the last few months, our neighborhood has been here quite often because of the proposed woodlands um, development. Uh, once again, I want to reiterate that our neighborhood on Walden Road we do not come out and fight against development. I live right next door to the Orient Kennel Club and the new vet clinic. They're wonderful neighbors. I have the driving range directly behind me. They are also wonderful neighbors. From what I understand, and I know Sweet Amy's Restaurant, obviously everybody loves it. It's wonderful food. There's a need for it in our township, I feel. Um, Big B Coffee, it's wonderful. My only concern is the apartments and where they're going to be located. I'm concerned that even though we have a dense tree line on Walden Road, um, I'm concerned that we're going to see a lot of rooftops and we're going to have a lot of light pollution, floodlights, that type of thing. We did have to go to the kennel club and the vet and ask them to please tone down their night security cameras because our house was lit up like, like anything at night. I mean, we had to put extra shades up and it was, it was not good. They cooperated, it's wonderful. So I really, at this point, I'm impressed with what I've seen. I don't have any objections. My only concern, once again, is the traffic because it's already terrible for us to get out of Walden Road. So I would hope that perhaps we could get a traffic light and the noise pollution. And I worry about the ponds. Um, the owner of that property used to have a running windmill that he used to keep his pond full. And that has not been in operation for, well, since he passed away a number of years ago. So his pond is way down. Tracy's pond at 270 Walden is way down. So I'm, I'm concerned about, are these ponds going to get dried up? Are they going to bring the the windmill, which was just beautiful, we all loved seeing it. Are they gonna put that back into operation to help the ponds uh, and keep everything healthy and wonderful? But other than that, I, I really can't see anything to object to at this point. I do have a question. I didn't hear anybody address perhaps getting a liquor license for the restaurant. 
So I might have a concern about that. But other than that, I'm impressed with what I see. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Elizabeth Fenwick, 1133 Devon Street. And I think this project would be a great asset to the community. I um, enjoyed hearing more about it. I was excited about it already, but seeing uh, it broken down, it's a lot more exciting. But uh, ever since Sweet Amy's closed, I haven't been able to find a restaurant that can meet my dietary needs either. And I work in Rochester, and I've sent a lot of the Rochester community here too, and they're eagerly awaiting them reopening also for the same reason. Can't really find a place like that. And I feel like them as people and their business were a great asset to the community when they were in business, and I'm eager to see them reopen. Thank you for your comments. Hello, my name is Melissa Canellis, and this is Lincoln both fans of Sweet Amy's Restaurant. Um, my address is 986 Maloney Ave. Um, I am a resident and a business owner, as they would say, in Northern Lake Orion, ha, 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 Oxford. Um, so I wanted to be here in support for Amy and Scott Harris today. Um, learning more about the project, I can say we did buy a home this last year. Um, having a family and having a boy and a girl, there is nowhere that we could live without a three bedroom. Fortunately, we found a house we could buy, but there were not a lot of options when it came to apartments with three bedrooms. So I really like and appreciate that. Um, anyone that drives south on M24, I know this gets repeated again and again tonight, but I do see the backup as an insurance agent. I am terrified that my insurers are gonna get rear-ended or rear-end someone else on a daily basis. So hopefully that would cause a little less panic attack there. <laughs> um, and I like the idea in general for um, having the drive through there and the convenience and everything else. I do like the idea of the stoplight because I used to live at Joslin and Silverbell, and any time we took that way down, it was terrifying. <clears throat> Um, more so outside of the consumer side, I'm here as a personal support for Scott and Amy. My husband was a chef at their restaurant for multiple years. Um, not only was he a chef at their restaurant, but we also became close friends with them. On top of that, anything that they did, they took more care than many other business owners I've ever seen. They were way more thorough than many other business owners, myself included, and I am a crazy analytical person. Um, they were genuine any time from the pandemic to struggles with seating to struggles with anything to do with the restaurant, uh, um, loss of business, closing down, reopening, and shutting down officially. Every step along the way, they communicated with the staff. They were incredibly professional, incredibly organized. <coughs> I just genuinely, as humans, they are amazing people, and I would love to see them own another restaurant in the area and more. So, thank you. Thank you for your comments. <clears throat> Sorry. Hi, I'm Jen Gatesy. I live at 776 Fairledge in Lake Orion. Um, for the coffee shop, I think that would be amazing. I live off of Heights Road, so we get stuck by all the traffic stopping for Starbucks and blocking all the traffic. That would be um, a phenomenal idea to have another option. Um, and as for Sweet Amy's, my family of seven has multiple um, food allergies, and it's been missed greatly. And so I really appreciate also when we would go into the restaurant, it wasn't just a restaurant. Um, it was like a family. They were very kind. They were very um, considerate. They knew us. And whether you had not been in for a while or you were there all the time, they knew us. They recognized me tonight, and I haven't seen them in probably, you know, nine months. So I just, I really, really would appreciate for this to be approved. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. <coughs> Hi, I'm Susan Johnston. I live at 348 Four Seasons Drive, which is the condo development north of the church. Um, it doesn't sound like it, but I don't know if th this has been addressed at all. Is there, are there going to be plans for outdoor car shows, Culver style, with music and guys mulling around showing off their vehicles? <clears throat> um, I sure don't want to listen to 50s music which I would hear if there's something like that planned in the works once a week or even once a month might be too much. Uh, another concern I have is, like many have already expressed, the traffic for us to go north on 24 and have to use that turnaround. The gentleman mentioned people are afraid to go. They sit there forever or other people go when they shouldn't. 
it's dangerous already, and this is going to add a lot to it. Uh, I'm also wondering about air quality. It's going to be a lot of idling vehicles, maybe only morning and night, but in that line for the coffee shop, what the, where is all that exhaust? Is it going to concentrate in my backyard? I am on the south side of our condo development. And my last concern is a personal one that um, having a coffee shop with high calorie sweet drinks within walking distance is going to be dangerous for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your comments. <clears throat> Might be one of the better comments we've ever gotten. That was very entertaining. <laughs> Makes it fun. Go ahead. My name is John Whitley. Address is 6581 East Lawn Avenue, Clarkston. Uh, former resident of Lake Orain, known Scott for 25 years probably, uh, and Amy for uh, about 10. Uh, small business owner as well uh, in the area. Uh, just to tell you, you are be very fortunate to have um, small business owners like, uh, like Scott and Amy. Very uh, high integrity people. Um, my wife and I are both vegan, so we appreciate the, uh, the ability to have a vegan alternative. And um, definitely a big fan of Big B as well. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Good evening, Marianne Ryan, 301 Walden Road. I live across the street from this development. <clears throat> the parcel of property that sits on the corner of M24 and Walden Road was previously owned by Tim Jones. People might remember the flower shop that existed there, but I was a guest who was frequently invited on the rest of the property. Tim did landscaping, but that doesn't adequately describe what he really did. He was an artist. The flowers, trees, and bushes planted on this piece of heaven were beyond description. The number of annuals, biannuals, and perennials that bloomed throughout the year were stunning. We would sit on his patio, which overlooked the pond, and bask in the peace and tranquility of the place. I can't think of a better use for this property than a restaurant with a patio overlooking that pond. I'm sure the vegetation he planted remains to some degree, and I believe the citizens of Orient Township deserve to experience the solemn beauty of the place. It would honor Tim if others could enjoy the environment he sought to create. We in the neighborhood have been expecting the Antique Car Club to appear for a very long time now. We have no idea why it, ha why it hasn't. As for the apartment density, I leave that issue to the Zoning Board to sort out. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Ryan Solden. I live at uh, 4124 Calumet Drive in uh, Oakland Township. Uh, I'm here to support <coughs> uh, Scott Harris and his wife, Amy. I've known Scott for probably 15 plus years, uh, echoing some of the some of the people that have spoke before me. Uh, very very passionate uh, individual, and um, anything he kind of commits to, he is in it 110 uh, percent. So, what I've seen and heard tonight uh, with their plans and their development, uh, very impressed. Uh, and then selfishly, <clears throat> I'm a big dog owner. So my route uh, is is right there uh, on Walden, uh, and a Big B would be uh, would be awesome because I would go there and get my coffee, and then take my dogs, and life would be good. Thank you much. Thank you for your comments. My name is Shirley Moran, and Scott Harris is uh, my son, <laughs> Amy, my daughter-in-law. And uh, we live in Davison, Michigan at 9257 Monica Drive. And so we frequent their restaurant at least two times a month. And we have to drive like 40 minutes <laughs> to get there. But we appreciate the quality of the food. And I'm also a naturopathic doctor. So uh, the types of food that my family eats is very important to me. So I appreciate going to a restaurant that I know that the quality of the food is, is there, is what they say it is. And, um, and it always tastes very good, no matter what we eat. So um, I think that the addition of this uh, restaurant would be a great addition to Lake Orion and for health reasons, too. <clears throat> So I thank you for your time. 
Thank you for your comments. My name is Marcy Ramsey. I live at 335 Walden Road. And it was my understanding that the restaurant, the car club, and the coffee shop were already approved. So it was just the, the four people, four family housing that was what this meeting was going to be about. I really would love to have the restaurant and the car club and all of it approved as long as we can somehow get that traffic light in at Walden and Lapeer because it's a traffic nightmare, pretty constant to get off of Walden onto the Pear Road. And if there's accidents every someplace in the area, they take off and they come back down Walden Road and sometimes it's a mile back up. That's my, my only concern. And I was concerned about the wildlife, but it sounds like that's kind of being addressed. So I appreciate it. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else from the public? Go ahead. One more. Uh, Scott Harris, as you can probably guess by now, right? Uh, 943 Watersme Drive, Oxford, Michigan. So when I uh, thought what I was going to say this evening, the thought came, the thought came to my mind, uh, the conversation I had with my wife uh, in late summer, early fall of 2015. I got a little different rendition than burnout on marketing. She was actually uh, in a company where they lost two major accounts back to back and was caught up in a, in a riff. Uh, they lost the Greek Town Casino account and the Blue, uh, the Blue Cross uh, that we know so well in Michigan account. Um, so we had been talking about this restaurant concept for some time and her desire to do something special. She wanted to always, we were having conversations about creating this little uh, brunch breakfast spot that she would know everyone's name like cheers and it was a common theme com common conversation in our house uh, so uh, for those of you who don't know me I'm a former commercial banker turned insurance consultant so pretty conservative by nature so uh, when she asked me to turn this from something that we we're just talking about to something that we actually might do uh, the thing that I told her is is you don't start a restaurant or any business for that matter because it would be cute or nice. You do it because there's a business need. So our due diligence literally went from the top of Oxford to the, uh, when the palace was still standing to where the palace was, and we did the same thing on Baldwin Road. And we literally got the menus for every single restaurant. Uh, and we evaluated them, we dined in many of them, and we determined that nobody was doing what she envisioned. Nobody was doing upscale in Lake Orion, um, and so we started uh, just two years into our, our marriage and, and blended family. We said we're going to do this crazy restaurant thing. And for those of you who have patronized her restaurant, you know the rest of the story. It was a great business, not because we made a lot of money, because that was always a challenge for those of you in particular that know where the location was at, but because we put every ounce of everything into this restaurant, um, in order to build something that helped the community. Fast forward to today. With the absence of her restaurant, there's still no one doing what her and her team did, the way they did it. But this time, the vision is even grander. For the same reasons that Honest to Goodness became a reality in May of 2016, we're hopeful that once again it'll become a reality sometime around the summer of 2024. And just like there's a business case for Amy's restaurant, there's all, also a business case for all the other components of this development. The car club, the Big B, the new luxury dwelling units, they all have a need and purpose that will provide value and benefit to this Lake Warrior community. And hence, I enthusiastically support this project and respectfully request the Planning Commission to also share in my excitement by providing conceptual approval this evening. Thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. Additional comments from the public. All right, with this time, uh, can we read the uh, citizen letters that we received into record, please? Sure. Uh, we received, sorry. Uh, we received a total of 10 letters 
six that were in favor of, of, the, of the development, four that were opposed. Uh, the, the residents that sent letters were Cheryl Quiro, Michael Cladwell, Beverly Walton, Linda Martin Sang, Amy Harris, Riley Harris, Giselle Graham, <clears throat> Carly Haas, and Jessica Williams. Um, for those that supported the development, uh, the, the overall general theme was the, how much they uh, enjoyed Sweet, Amy, Sweet Amy's restaurant and recognizing the need for additional dining options in the community. Um, those that were against it uh, had concerns about traffic and the, the size of the development and the footprint of the development. Um, the, uh, the applicant covered some of the um, statistical bullet points that came from Facebook. Um, um, Amy, uh, Amy Harris provided a letter that reiterated those, and I just need to read those into the record um, in terms of the general feedback that resulted from the Facebook postings. <clears throat> They had 494 overall like posts, 151 overall love posts, eight overall wow faces, <laughs> one overall post, one, one sad face, two overall care faces, emojis with hearts, um, 249 positive comments, 11 negative comments, 191 positive likes to the comments, 17 positive loves to the comments, Three positive care to the comments, eight negative likes to the comments. It was shared 27 times, and there were <clears throat> six individuals provide negative comments. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm trying to figure out if we were reading Santa's list or public <laughs> comments. But. All right, with that said, I'll turn it over to my fellow planning commissioners for any comments, questions they would like to add during the public hearing portion of this evening. All right, at this point, I'll turn over the Board of Trustees. All right, thank you. Um, any comments or questions from uh, three of us over here? You want to go first? No, you go ahead. Okay. I was going to refer to our new uh, state rep here, but she graciously let me go first. Uh, I think people like the restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> I counted 18 folks come to that podium and 75 percent 12 out of 18 uh, apply, so. very very good very good well usually we come to these and it's always uh, we hear the opposite of uh, displeasure not pleasure uh, this is our not our first rodeo on this uh, parcel compared to what we had before I, I much like this, I like to see that open space and all that property along the Walden Road uh, preserved, especially those pine trees. And I like the concept of not having a, an entrance off of Walden Road. I feel for you on the traffic light. Lived out here all my life, and I, I agree, it's, it's not going to get any better. Uh, if we didn't have all the development to the north of us, we could keep those people from northern Orion, otherwise known as Oxford. <laughs> coming down through there, we probably would have a lot more space. But uh, reviewing all the letters, getting back to the, my job is taking more serious. Uh, our planning commission is going to have a lot of work to do. I've read all the review letters from the, our planner, our OHM engineering, and our fire marshal. And uh, I'm very confident that uh, these men and women up here that represent the planning commission will do their due diligence and are with, along with our consultants and uh, go through this diligently. As has been previously stated in the past, someday, somehow, somewhere, this property will be developed. Uh, the property owner has the right, being a private property, to come forward to this uh, body and go with the PUD part of our ordinance and part of our <clears throat> our zoning, part of our master plan. So looking forward to the Planning Commission doing their due diligence and finding out finally whatever your recommendation is to the Township Board. That's my comments. Thank you. Donnie, you want to go? Thanks, everyone, for coming tonight. I always appreciate the 
um, community involvement because that's what makes a good project uh, a good project. So, and I thank the developer. You guys have been very diligent and patient. So, um, I just had a couple comments, or actually, there are questions, and then hopefully they can be answered either tonight or as we go through the process. Um, the community benefit, I just wanted to see if the water feature and the tree line features were just actually part of the green space and the water retention and not necessarily additional green space and additional water space. Um, and the safety path connection, yes, it connects safety paths, but what is the actual um, contribution that you are putting in in addition to what's already um, uh, required for that for that development. Um, I know that there's a gap on M24 because of the the land was never um, uh, equaled out very well, and so there was a big gap right on 24. If that's what you're referring to, um, just the height the height of the design, and I know that height was an issue on the other developments, and so I don't know if we're in the guidelines of where it needs to be or if it's higher than normal. Um, and I know single ownership is one of the criterias, and it seems to me that there might be two or three. I'm not sure how that's gonna work, just if you can clarify that. Um, and the drive-through use uh, with the coffee, is that a special use or is that allowed because it's a PUD? And the price point of the apartments, and just to verify that we're looking at the water drainage, because I know that's been an issue from day one, and that back lot, is that is that back up for sale or is that a development that's gonna come down at a different time? So those are just my general questions if we move forward. Thank you. All right, thank you. I'll, I'll make a few comments as well. Um, thank you everyone for coming. Glad to see you all here. And um, if you ever want to have something positive done, I think I'm going to call Scott and Amy <laughs> to run PR. Um, Michael, you should have brought them the first time. Uh, no, I think, I think that, um, and I, I know Dr. Kanayan is here as well. Um, you know, this is a tough site, and we know, we know the issues. And, you know, when I, I reviewed the notes this afternoon from the last couple of times you were in front of us, and the notes I had was, the main concerns were traffic, 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 um, and then preservation of wetlands and, and natural resources, the height, and just I would say like the general <clears throat> fit of the building for the area. Um, and those were some, and then the storm drainage has come up over and over um, in that area. You know, we've had lots of conversations, I will say, um, to the credit of Detroit Riverside Capital, they have been extremely diligent working with our consultants with OHM. Um, and our team, uh, Lynn and Tammy, um, to try to do the best they could to take the feedback they've received over the last few opportunities they presented in front of us and put all that together. Um, so thank you, because we don't always get that. A lot of times we get, when people don't get their way, we get lawsuits. And so thank you for not doing that. Um, because that doesn't always bode well for the township, unfortunately. And I agree with what Mike said. Um, I generally said at these meetings, because a lot of times, this is the only time we see some of you is when something's gonna be built in your backyard and you wanna come tell us how you feel about it. And we wanna see you, um, certainly then, but we're happy to see you anytime. And um, it's a challenge because, as Mike said, I mean, this is the busiest road in Northern Oakland County, and it's not a park. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I appreciate, um, Marianne, your comments because I didn't know the previous owner, but I, I got to know you 10 years ago when I was first running for this job. And um, there is a lot of history on this site. I used to buy flowers there too. It was a very unique piece. Um, but people get very passionate about these things and we know it's not a park, the township doesn't own it. So unless we decided to do that, it won't ever be a park. But it's nice when you do have developers that want to try to work with you and, and property owners, as Dr. Kanine, to, your, to his credit, has really come to us, come to me multiple times and said, what do you think the township would want to see there? And so again, not everyone's going to be happy with what goes on this corner, but I, I personally think this is a, a, a lot better than what we've seen in the past. Um, and I think you've really addressed a lot of the issues um, that have been brought up by the people that live around there. The one thing I will talk tell you all about is the traffic and the traffic light. 
Um, Jim Stevens from OHM and I met with MDOT, the, tra the, um, the director of MDOT for our region um, a few months ago, a couple months ago on this, well, on a few areas on Lapeer Road, they, they, they are it's under their jurisdiction. The township owns no roads. We have jurisdiction over no roads. Um, Walden is um, the road commission, but MDOT is the organization we'd work with on this project. And we specifically asked about a light at this intersection. Will they require it? Will they put the light in? Um, because obviously there's a ton of traffic there, and it's this this is generally considered a small scale development, a drop in the ocean, um, and to require this developer to bear the cost of that traffic light, which would be very costly, is a challenge as well. Probably for the development probably makes it probably a no go actually. So we're working with MDOT. Ultimately, they're going to be the ones that decide what improvements will be required there. I can tell you so far, our conversations with the developer has been really positive and MDOT. Once they review all these things, we'll be able to make those determinations as to what improvements will be needed, if any. And, you know, there's lots of places I think we need traffic improvements. The challenge is, as I said a few minutes ago, we have no jurisdiction except we can sometimes be a squeaky enough wheel to force improvements. Um, and I can see another developer here tonight who's dealing with some similar issues with dealing with MDOT. Um, so those are kind of my comments. I just, um, it's great to see um, positive support. I, I know we were, we worked a lot together on your first site and I agree. Food was amazing, parking was tough, location you drove by before you saw it. It was a tough spot for a restaurant. Um, but obviously you have a huge following and great food. And I do think that's the first time we've had emojis read into the record, so. Um, those are my comments. And so this gets weird for now because it's going to seem strange to some of you, but this is a, where we will close our public hearing and the three of us will leave. Doesn't mean we don't care, but we will be taking this up. This is a multi-step process. So um, I'm sure I will be watching the rest of this meeting as well my colleagues, but we're not leaving because we're not interested. But that, I, I sometimes forget to say that. We've gotten emails from people saying, I cannot believe you left right before they started talking about it. But that's how this works. So with that, I will close our comments and turn it back over we're, to you, Mr. Chair. Just, sorry, you're rushing the process here real quick. We've got to ask the petitioner back one, once oh, more. Okay. So, and then, and then you guys can take off. Um, so real quick, I want to just address a couple of comments here from the petitioner. So, uh, Chris, you talked about it a little bit, but um, can we just touch base on traffic mitigation and runoff and drainage? Those were a couple of topics here, and then they got a couple more. Sure. <clears throat> Okay, certainly, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, <clears throat> traffic topic is as uh, the supervisor outlined. This is an MDOT controlled road. So, no one in this room has any authority over whether or not we can put a traffic light there. But all we can do is be the squeaky wheel. And in this case, we might be the only wheel because absent of another development proposal that produces a traffic impact study and hands it to MDOT, they're never going to look at this intersection. So, really, we're by proposing this and submitting that traffic study we are uh, forcing them to identify the problem. Now, what they decide to do about the problem is completely up to them. There's a lot of variables that they have to consider, and um, there's a lot of traffic volume on Lapeer Road, as we know. So the idea of stopping it with a traffic light may not be their first reaction. Um, but certainly their job in this state is to ensure that we have uh, drivable, functioning, and hopefully well-operating roads. And so we trust that they will do this. Um, for this project and as far as our current process with them we've completed the TIS we have submitted it to them we've also submitted it to the township uh, it didn't get fully reviewed before the meeting because we were late on our submission with that so forgive that however um, what that traffic study basically says is that the existing conditions warrant a stoplight at that intersection today without our project warrants that stoplight um, and it recommends the mitigation of that stoplight now again the determination on how or if that can happen um, is not ours. But we will be certainly the biggest cheerleader and, uh, and be adequately working with MDOT to try to deliver that solution. Um, so that's first on traffic. I think on drainage, uh, the, the best way I can describe this is, you know, that whole corner basically more or less drains to that southeast corner of the site. So if you drew a 45-degree line that hit that corner, that's basically where all the flow of water is going. So 
If you notice, none of the surrounding properties that have concern about stormwater are in that flow. <coughs> water is flowing from the surrounding properties onto our site into the culvert that goes under M24. So it, it would completely have to reverse stream and go the opposite direction from the way the gravity is pulling it in order for the water to move in that direction. So that's just a general concept. But then on top of that, of course, we have to manage the stormwater from our site and make sure that, you know, despite any of our developments, that it doesn't now all of a sudden go to a neighboring property. And that's what our stormwater management system will do. So that underground detention will go through the ordinance review process. We're aware of what those requirements are. Um, we briefly designed a system with our civil team at <coughs> this stage in the project. Um, it's a little too early to get tremendously detailed about that, but hear me when I say that we understand it will be a thoroughly reviewed <coughs> system and it will meet the ordinance. So we can have faith in it um, satisfying that and, um, you know, of course, eliminating stormwater concerns. A couple of the random notes I wanted to just quickly um, respond to. So yes, no connection to the adjoining 20 acre parcel and <coughs> no intent to connect. Um, there is a road on Walden existing, as Ms. Duman suggested, um, it was an old like service drive and it, our plan calls for it to be turned into a pathway. So just a walking path, not a driveway. So yes, it will be eliminated. There's no chance a car can pull down it. Um, as far as the fence, I offhand am not aware of where that is, but I will make myself aware of it and ensure we can do what we can to mitigate that. Um, as far as the apartments themselves and light pollution, um, you know, one thing we have going for us just on the apartments themselves, which of course are the furthest west, is that because of the sort of residential character of them, they would have similar lighting to what a single family home would have. We'd likely have a couple of garage lights, you know, adjacent to the entry point of the garage, um, and then a couple of lights, you know, along the front facade. But we're not talking about huge parking lot lights that are lighting up a big sea of, of parking for the apartments. And that's the closest, of course, to the community. Now, the commercial lights will be blocked from those houses, hide the apartments as they sit in between them. Um, but even still, those lights will have the names escaping me of them, but basically they point the direction of the light down to mitigate light pollution as much as possible. And that's also covered in the ordinance, so we will um, achieve that. Um, as far as noise is concerned, I mean, we, you know, these are, these are residential dwellings. Um, there's only 24 of them. I don't think they would generate any kind of noise above and beyond what typical single family homes would do. Garage door opens, dog barking, but that's about it. Um, as far as ponds not staying full, I mean, as I mentioned, the water all does drain there. So, you know, not being a civil engineer myself, I don't have a hypothesis as to why that is, but um, we understand the general flow is to that southeast corner. Um, and one of the last points here, outdoor car shows. Um, I can't speak for Dr. Knine. I'm sure he can answer that question, but uh, that's not a intent of the development. Can I speak for them and say they never will? We can ask him. But... Um, the, the goal is to be able to store the cars inside the structure, and that's what the building's there for. Okay. Those car shows. Thank you. One, one other last question was about uh, control and ownership. Sure. So the site is currently controlled solely by Dr. Kanai, and um, he owns title and owns it free and clear. Now, there's agreements um, that are formulated for each of our respective parties, DRC being one of them, Scott and Amy being one of them, and Dr. Kanai being one of them, to purchase these individual parcels. Um, following the approval process, but uh, for the um, sake of this application, the you know, land is currently owned by one individual. Okay, thank you for that. All right, with that said, thank you very much. At uh, 824, I'd like to close the public hearing. Uh, Chris, if you'd like to close the Board of Trustee. <coughs> Mr. Supervisor, I move to uh, agenda our meeting. Support. Been moved and supported. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, real quick, if anyone's uh, not sticking around for the rest of our agenda, if you, if you are going to exit, if you could just do so quietly, we have the rest of the agenda to still make our way through. Um, well, you so, might note real quick that they, you do have this on the agenda. Correct, yep. So there yep. will be discussing this still. Yes, yep. So it is on our agenda later on as item 7C. Uh, so stick around if you're still interested in the further deliberation of this project, but the public hearing portion is officially closed.
give everyone a couple of minutes to exit if they so wish. At 824, I would like to, or let's say 825, I would like to reconvene our uh, regular meeting. You guys could just take conversations and out to the lobby for me, please. That would be appreciated. Next up on our agenda is item 7A, PC 2019-06, Silver Bell PUD site plan extension located on four vacant parcels south of Silver Bell Road. On the east side of Joslin, Sidwell, 0933201, 001, 0933128001, 0928379001, and 0928451001. The applicant is present. If you could state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening. My name is David Stoyer. My address is 30180 Orchard Lake Road, Suite 150, Farmington Hills. <coughs> Go ahead, if you would like to express why you're seeking an additional extension. Um, yes, we thought we had the property all approved and ready to uh, turn over to start the actual physical development towards the end of June. Uh, MDOT and CN Railroad wanted to come out for a final inspection and walk, and in doing so, um, had some new requirements. We've been working nonstop with the uh, RCOC, MDOT, CN Railroad, our traffic consultant, OHM, uh, professional engineering associates, our, our engineers, to uh, get everybody together in an agreement about how to proceed. And it's all about what's off-site, has nothing to do with the, uh, what's in the legal description that you read this evening. Okay. All right, with that said, um, discussion on the topic, um, seeing as how they've been moving forward, I'm aware that they've been uh, proceeding with approvals. I'm in favor of an additional extension for their discussion. If no further discussion, I'll entertain a motion. All right, I'll make a motion that the Planning Commission approve the site plan extension request for PC 2019 06, Silverville PUD site plan for one year. Um, the approval is based on the findings of fact that the applicant is still working through approvals with neighboring jurisdictions and uh, approvals are still in, in process and there has been due diligence on the project and intent of it moving forward. Do I have support? Support. Support by uh, Mrs. Urbanowski. Further discussion? Any public discussion on the motion? Seeing none, can I have a roll call vote, please, Lynn? Yes. Sorry. Walker? Yes. Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Bracken? Yes. Gingell? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you all very much. We look forward to seeing your uh, project. All right, next we have 7B, PC 22-16, Lava Mountain Special Land Use Site Plan Postponement Extension, located at 1472 South Lapeer Road, 0914-100-074. Do not believe the applicant is present tonight. Um, he had uh, another conflict. Um, I am familiar with this. This was a, um, essentially a postponement of further deliberation on this topic for them to work through. Um, essentially, if you recall, we had made some, some comments and suggestions about how to make the drive-through configuration of Lava Mountain Coffee work uh, better. Um, I think they're still working through that. I know there's been conversations with OHM, um, so there is some movement, and I would support um, further postponing this uh, PC case. Thank further you, discussion. Go ahead, Mr. Walker. Move that the Planning Commission approve the, with regard to PC 2022-16 Lava Mountain SLU and Site Plan Postponement Extension. Uh, approve the post postponement extension request uh, for one year, this approval is based upon the information received from the petitioner. All right, I have a postponement um, motion on the table. Do I have support? Support. Uh, support by Mrs. Gindel. Further discussion? Seeing none, any public discussion on the motion? Can I have a roll call vote, please, Lynn? Urbanowski? Yes. Gindel? <clears throat> oh, yes. Sorry. Walker? Yes. Racken? Yes. St. Henry? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, that leads us back to 7C. Um, if uh, maybe we can flag down our applicant to come back into the room. 
Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, all right, with that said, um, <clears throat> the floor is back to you guys. Since we've done, a, done an overview of the project, is there anything you want to add or can we get into some reviews? Or Yeah, absolutely, we can okay. get into the reviews. Okay, wonderful. Let's start with um, our planner's report from Giffels Webster. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the Planning Commission. My name is Eric Peach with Giffels Webster, the Township Planning Consultant. Uh, and we have met with the applicant in the past uh, at some pre-submittal uh, meetings uh, to discuss the site. Um, so it's, it's nice to see that a plan has come to fruition. Uh, and if you had a chance to read uh, the summary of our review, I'll kind of touch upon those items. Um, there's a lot of detailed information that was discussed with the presentation this evening. Um, but for all intents and purposes, this proposal uh, is allowed through the PUD process um, per the ordinance. Uh, in terms of the land use, the PUD concept provides for a more appropriate transition from the commercial development along Lapeer Road to the higher density multifamily residential single uh, and single family which exists to the west. Um, the density plan alternative would result in a more abrupt transition between the single family lots and the commercial uses and the new master plan reflects a desire for more attached dwelling units, including duplex, quadruplex, and other missing middle housing units in appropriate locations. Um, in terms of the conditional rezoning, so in 2019, there's a little bit of history uh, on, this, on, on these parcels. Uh, in 2019, a conditional rezone was allowed for the site for the southeast quadrant uh, to be rezoned from R2 to GB. Um, however, the rezoning was conditioned upon the preclusion of a number of uses, one of which was that um, there would be no drive-through uses uh, within the GB. So if this wasn't um, pursued as a, a PUD, a drive-through would not be permitted on the site. Um, but the applicant intends to amend this restriction by way of the rezone to a PUD and thus allow for the drive-through restaurant to be considered as a special land use. Um, sorry, that, that's actually a typo. So um, the restaurant would not be considered as a special land use within the GB district. It would just be that because of the PUD um, change in, uh, as a PUD, a rezone to PUD, um, that would allow for the, uh, the drive-through use. In terms of the off-street parking, the residential apartment units satisfy the parking requirements with the two-car garages for each of the units. Um, those are attached. As was discussed, they were uh, deliberately designed to be side loading. An uh, additional nine on street visitor parking spaces will be provided within the, the residential component. The surface parking spaces provided in the GB zone satisfy the requirement of all the proposed uses for the restaurant, um, the restaurant spaces. As far as the loading and unloading, the um, there was some question when reviewing the site plan. Uh, it appears as though there were two loading areas. However, one was observed to be potentially not in compliance with the uh, standards for uh, dimensions. So particular, I believe it was the length. Um, so that might be something that the Planning Commission may consider whether or not one loading, loading zone would be sufficient for the overall site if in fact that second one is not in compliance or if there might be a way for it to be brought into compliance if it's found to, to be substandard. Uh, the pres preservation of natural features, the central west portion of the site contains wetland, natural features, and is proposed to be preserved. A tree survey for the entire site has not yet been provided, uh, and so um, if the project were to move forward, that would be a requirement um, from the applicant. A landscaping plan was also not provided, but that's something that we can also look at um, if this advances to final, as with uh, a lighting plan. I know that there are some concerns for um, shining uh, light on adjacent properties. Uh, building height, I know, is also another question. Um, within the GB district, the limitation is 25 feet, and within R2 is 30, uh, but being rezoned to PUD, um, the, the structures would meet those uh, standards anyway. Uh, improvements into the traffic patterns, that's something we would defer to the township engineer for further comment. Uh, in terms of pedestrian access, the applicant emphasizes the desire to propose building and connecting the safety paths as was discussed. Um, so that's 
something that we found um, to be beneficial to the, to the project. Um, internal pedestrian connections from all safety paths to the residential and commercial uses are shown, uh, but the applicant should consider an additional safety path link within the public right of way to the proposed public amenity, uh, which is currently uh, believed to be only accessible via the internal sidewalks of the, of the development, um, and I'm sure the applicant can speak to more of that um, tonight. And then in terms of the density plan submittal, the applicant uh, specifically stated the proposed density of the development. Um, the review and analysis indicate the residential density is approximately 6.52 dwelling units per acre, which is higher than the future density plan designation of three uh, to five dwelling units per acre, and that is something that uh, was discussed already. Um, in terms of building materials, we saw some color renderings, um, so that's something that the Planning Commission can discuss. Um, the information that I had when reviewing this conceptual was that the, uh, the residential units are of a modern farmhouse style. And then um, before I talk about the PUD eligibility, there are a number of waivers that we have outlined in the summary as well. Um, one of which I believe may be able to be removed, and that's number three. But uh, to go through them uh, each, the first is a waiver to allow reduced setbacks of the drive through restaurant and its parking facilities to the north property line. Um, this was kind of one of the main focal points of the proposed development is the proximity of the drive through Bigby Coffee um, to the north, the north property line not just the building, but also the, the drive-through lanes and the parking uh, facilities. Number two, a waiver to allow the three multifamily residential buildings to encroach five feet into the required 35-foot setback along the north property line. Um, that's kind of more of a, a minor detail, but it's something that I think the applicant can discuss. And then number three, as I stated, uh, potentially can be removed, um, which is a waiver request to allow portions of the two easternmost multifamily buildings to cross into the GB zoning district, which should not be something that needs to be considered simply because if the PUD is approved, then it's a rezone and there's no internal um, <coughs> zoning designation line. And then a waiver request to allow a reduction in width of the drive-through maneuvering lanes to have adequate width that permit the uh, safe one-way traffic movement. One of the major concerns that we have uh, is the placement and the circulation of the, the drive-through facility and the way that the circulation of traffic flows. Um, it appears as though they're, it's not as easy um, in terms of left-hand turns, access in, access out. Um, so that might be something that the Planning Commission would consider to take uh, a detailed look into. Um, the a waiver request to allow for one loading facility for the overall commercial development, as I stated previously, it appears as though one of the two uh, loading areas is of substandard dimensions, um, which could be something that we can look at tonight. And then a waiver to allow the internal roadway width from Lapeer Road to the west termination to be less than 60 feet uh, in width with a 30-foot paving section. Uh, with, in regards to the PUD eligibility, the Planning Commission should review the eligibility requirements uh, and in order to, uh, as part of this process, uh, public benefits proposed by the applicant in, include the preservation of wetland and wooded areas, safety path enhancement, aesthetic site elements, and a public art feature at the corner of Lapeer and Walden Roads. Uh, and not to go into any detail, but um, the PUD criteria that the Planning Commission can consider are the recognizable benefit, uh, the density impact, uh, and then the um, correlation appropriateness with the Township Master Plan, which um, upon our review we believe is um, in line with the Master Plan. So also economic, develop or economic impact, uh, the open space, unified control, compatibility with adjacent uh, uses, the transition areas, and then, of course, the architectural and site element design um, of, of the project. So uh, that concludes my report, uh, our analysis of the uh, conceptual site plan and PUD application, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. At this time, I'll turn over to OHM for their review. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I think you've gotten a, a very nice uh, overview of the site, so I'll just kind of skip ahead to uh, 
our concluding comments and, and concerns at the end of our letter. Um, <clears throat> At, at the time of our letter, we had not received the uh, traffic study yet, um, so that was our main reason for concluding that this uh, concept PUD as submitted was not in substantial compliance uh, with the township ordinances and engineering standards. Um, since uh, the, the issuance of our letter, we have received the study. Uh, it's, it's being reviewed. Uh, we understand MDOT has also received it and uh, will be reviewing it. Um, Taking a quick look at it, uh, as mentioned previously tonight, uh, you know, they're basically you know pointing out that the uh, existing traffic and uh, crossovers at uh, north and south of the uh, Walden Road intersection with 24 uh, already function uh, poorly and uh, warrant uh, traffic signals um, and. Uh, so that, that's uh, going to be up to MDOT as to whether or not they will uh, approve those. Um, uh, we, we had, uh, let's see, seven other comments here. Uh, number two was uh, regarding uh, the need to show uh, the stream relo relocation, uh, channel protection, and stormwater detention on the density plan. Uh, the stream relocation wasn't really talked about much tonight, but um, the, there is a natural stream that flows from the existing pond that's kind of central on the site um, to the culvert underneath 24. The applicant is proposing to relocate that uh, south, southeast of where it's uh, currently located. So that will be something that uh, will require a permit from the township uh, through a wetland permit application as well as EGLE, uh, from BI understanding. Um, channel protection that uh, we're asking for, that is the new requirement for the new stormwater <clears throat> standards that promote infiltration uh, to try to promote that uh, uh, drainage and infiltrating upstream of any proposed detention basin. Uh, so, so that can have an, an area impact and that's why we're asking for that to be shown. Um, number three, uh, again, the channel protection uh, needs to be shown on the concept plan, same, uh, same issue. Uh, number four, we're asking that the relocated stream uh, be reflected on all the sheets uh, for clarity. Uh, number five, uh, pointing out that there needs to be an approved turnaround at the west end of the multifamily development. Currently, the assumption would be that the uh, uh, Fire apparatus would, would utilize the driveways to make a T turnaround, which is not really going to be acceptable. So there'd have to be some additional pavement, uh, either a cul-de-sac or a, a T turnaround west of what's out there right now. Um, number six, uh, there's some grading on the site that's uh, currently in excess of one on four. We're asking that that uh, be amended. Um, and then uh, number seven, uh, we're asking that they clean up the survey. Uh, the survey that was included in the plan set was the old survey from the Classic Car Club site. Uh, it does not reflect the combination of the old parcels into the single new. Uh, so that's just a minor cleanup as well as the last item uh, relative to the sheet index. So um, that, uh, with that, um, you know, I'd hap be happy to answer any, any questions you guys have. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Uh, we did, as mentioned in OHM's review, the fire marshal did review the conceptual plans for uh, its current status in the process. Uh, similar sense of just concern uh, about some of the turnaround. Um, there was a site walk completed uh, by the site walk committee from Mr. Gross. Um, we've, we've completed a site walk a few times on this parcel in the past. Um, along with uh, preliminary reviews from WRC was in our packet this evening. So with that, I'll turn it over to my fellow planning commissioners for their initial thoughts and uh, comments, questions. <coughs> Anyone want to kick us off? Mrs. Kindle? Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. Just a quick comment about the traffic study. When will we have that to review? Mr. Landis? Um, we should have our review completed uh, within about a week, week and a half. So. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
additional thoughts? Mr. Chair? Yep, Mr. Walker? Were you done? Yes. Okay. Uh, let me start, start this off by saying I'm not sure anybody up here on this dais or on the other one over there was a more frequent patron of, of your restaurant than me. Uh, we, we've gone back a long way, so I want to disclose that right up front. Uh, I have no interest in your restaurant other than I really wanted you to make it happen. And anything negative I say up here today has got nothing to do with your restaurant or with Big B Coffee. I have some, ha I do have some questions, however. My biggest concern, and, and everybody has talked about it to date, is, is, the, is the traffic. And I understand uh, that you cannot control MDOT any more than we can. But the traffic, everybody, every developer that comes before us says this. It's only going to be 26 more cars, 48 more cars, 37 more cars, whatever the number is. Southbound 24 in the morning, and, and matter of fact, almost any time of the day now, north and southbound 24 is hideous. The traffic is terrible. And that stop sign at Walden and 24 is not sufficient. I mean, something's got to be done. I'm not saying you can do it. But to me, if, if there was a light either there or a light coming out of, if you finish this development at that ingress and egress point of your development on 24, it would make me extremely happy. And I think everybody would, would forget about a whole lot of other things if that was, if, that, if you could pull that off. So uh, I know you can't do it. I know the township can't do it. Uh, but that's, that's certainly my biggest concern. Uh, the next concern I have is, is, the, is, the, is the water runoff, especially with the, and you, you, you've said this before, and you use my phrase all the time, Michael, I'm not an engineer, and I, I say that all the time because I'm not an engineer. But, there, but I'm worried about the water runoff, especially with the stream configuration change, and if I'm saying that right, I'm not, I don't know if I am or not. And you indicated that all of the water runs to the southeast quadrant of your development and then goes into a culvert that runs under 24. Is that true right now? So, yeah, so currently the stream is located, um, I suppose I could pull it up on here, but I'll just describe it. It's I, I'm like sorry, I can switch back. Of, no, no, that's okay. I, I'd like to see it if, if yep, you could go show. ahead. We'll have a visual. Okay, so um, right in this area is where the stream currently runs. And so when Dr. Canine's initial initial rezone was approved and that site plan was approved, it was approved that that stream would get rerouted basically along this path here. And so it comes out here and then connects back into the same point it currently does. So the big culvert I was talking about sits kind of right here-ish. It's like six feet in <coughs> enormous. And it was put in a long time ago. Actually, I don't know about a long time ago, but in any case, it's a big six-foot culvert. And uh, that's where all the water flows to naturally. So there was already a permit from Eagle to relocate the stream right here, and we plan to copy the exact path of relocation and update the permit just to reflect the new design. But the point is that the stream relocation was, has already been through the eyes of Eagle, and they deemed that this path is uh, feasible and appropriate okay. to reroute it. All right. Uh, and then lastly, the, I'm concerned somewhat about the lighting. Uh, you, you indicated that there, there was enough trees and things in the way that this is not going to be any in, input to the to the neighbors to the west. So, what I try to describe is um, well, actually, I mean, if you picture the site here, so on that west portion of the site, um, that's where a residential is located, and so those have modest lighting, similar to what a single family, uh, you know, would have in terms of exterior facade lighting. Now, the parking lot to the east would have more traditional parking lot lighting. Uh, but my point was that that whole tree line on Walden is gonna remain. That's a part of this nature preservation effort. And so from Walden Road point of view, um, you will have the tree line completely blocking any lights in that parking lot. And the beauty of this site is there are some trees on the property lines and, and in areas that are being preserved that stand you know, 50, 60 feet tall. I mean, these things are huge. 
Um, and so those trees will serve as a great natural buffer, uh, both for light and also for the buildings themselves. And those trees are going to remain? Correct. Meaning, yes, we haven't done tree survey to tell you exactly which ones, right. but there's a big line of trees on Walden Road. Uh, the intent is to preserve those. Um, and then, you know, those other trees I mentioned are near kind of the entry point and then additionally over by the wetland feature. Well, as you may or may not know, I'm the biggest tree hugger up here. <laughs> the only other person who's a bigger tree hugger than I am that I know of is Marianne Ryan, who was one of the people that spoke during public comment. And she gave you her full <clears throat> endorsement. So uh, far be it for me to argue with Marianne Ryan. That's all I've got. Additional thoughts? I, I have a Service. clarification question. Go so, ahead. Um, Mr. Landis, you said that the, the stream relocation um, will need wetland or and and or eagle permits, but you're saying that's already been done. Allow, allow me to clarify if I could. So, the it was previously permitted for the conditional rezone for the original previously approved site. Okay. With the twenty-six thousand of office and the four of the restaurant, and so that same stream location design, basically the direction that it's moving, is exactly what we've copied on this. So the previous site plan was approved with that stream location, and we've taken the same one and placed it on this site plan. Is, is there any change? Because that came before the change in standards. Stormwater adoption? Yeah. The county stormwater adoption? Uh, the, Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I, I hear what you're asking. Uh, the stream relocation wouldn't necessarily be impacted by the new standards. Mm -hmm. um, the new standards would, would be more towards the uh, promoting infiltration, um, you know, outside of the uh, detention area. So I'd, I'd have to look. I, I don't recall, to be honest with you, the uh, previous site plan um, relocating that stream. I thought that the stream was being enhanced in place, but uh, I'd, I'd, I'd kind of like to look and see if I can't find that uh, uh, while we're still meeting here. So okay. um, I just, I had a couple other things I wanted to say and, and one concern that I have that hasn't been mentioned yet. Um, I have so many notes here. I started with positives and negatives. You guys have been here many, many times and I appreciate and uh, your tenacity and, and listening, because there were three people who came up here to speak tonight that I can remember that had been here before for the Woodlands, and they were not quite happy with that development. And it sounds like they all are okay with the development now. Um, probably no small part to <laughs> sweet Amy's, but I think it's also the other parts too, right? I mean, the, the car club is, is um, something that people wanted before. It's been approved already. It's something that I think people are looking forward to. I've, I've heard buzzes about, about that. Um, and then, you know, other people saying that um, the need for these apartments, um, which is something we've, we've definitely discussed. So I, I was, um, I guess, you know, Marianne's endorsement, I wrote it down. Um, that was huge, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, that was kind of a, I was waiting to see what she was going to say because, you know, I, I was wondering. Um, but my major concern, not major concern, but the only thing that I wanted to mention that we haven't talked about yet is that turnaround, um, the fire department um, turnaround or a cul-de-sac or something. Yet now, I, on, on, it says here, proposed temporary turnaround area. I mean. I think it's a bad note, frankly. It shouldn't say temporary. But it's, it is the proposed turnaround area. Now, we understand that the concern of this turnaround configuration is that if cars were parked outside of that garage, it would block the fire truck from being able to pull all the way in. Mm -hmm. so we do have a little bit of space to the west. And so I spoke with our engineers about this previously. And one concept was to extend those driveways um, further to the west so that it would provide a space that the car could still be parked in front of the garage without blocking the same like part of the driveway that the fire truck would use. <clears throat> I don't know if that is uh, feasible yet because they're working through that, but the intent would be to basically configure that driveway in a way where it achieves the goal of the turnaround. Yeah, I mean, that's 
the major part of it. We don't have a. Yep. Um, would like to add a few comments. Um, we're obviously at the initial step of this process, right? Concept and eligibility plan. Um, so let me speak to a couple of those things. I do think um, the proposal uh, as we see it here tonight from previous proposals on the parcel or adjacent parcels is much improved from density impact and it does meet a lot of the criteria in our master plan from that missing housing component. So I think that's a great benefit. I think um, we heard a, a large outcrying of support here this evening for um, Sweet Amy's and, and essentially the coffee shop. Um, so I think there's some positives there. Um, I do think there's a the number of kind of the technical items that it still needs to be addressed. You know, one of the things, um, <clears throat> you know, you were speaking of the turnaround, and if we're talking about extending that, right, my, my concern is about some of the buffer and transitional zones between this property and, and the adjacent ones. Um, so speaking with the, you know, the West, since that was a topic we were just on, you know, if we were to extend that, then that essentially eliminates any natural buffer that's going to remain or any tree buffer that we would be proposing. So that's a concern of mine. Um, it also seems like um, I am in support of, of the coffee shop. I think that's great. Um, I know previously when we approved the conditional rezone with the asterisk of no drive through, that was in, in relationship to traffic. Um, so I'll circle back to that one, but I mean, the, my biggest concern right now would be is, um, you know, we ask for a hundred foot setback to residential and that's significantly reduced here in this plan from, uh, you know, it's, it, to the building, it's 52 feet, right? To the driveway, it looks like it's about 30, you know, so I think kind of circling around to this topic, if, if there indeed is a, a hardship here because of some of the limitation of the natural features, I'm in support of working with that, but just to kind of flat out kind of just say it's 50 without other measures being proposed, and I think that circles me back to the landscape discussion. Um, you know, what measures, and it did get brought up this evening about the, con, you know, concern about proximity and, you know, we've had other projects here, straight zone, right, that, that it's a special land use, that's something we always talk about is, is sound, sound transfer, traffic flow. Um, so I think, you know, those are topics to um, consider in this plan. I would like to see that drive through. Um, I, I like the orientation of the site, but just, you know, can we, shift some things down? Can we start to make that, that buffer greater if we are going to indeed decrease it? You know, we're only on this plan, you know, we're not speaking about what's remaining for natural features of, of trees. We are talking about preserve, right? But, you know, what does grading do to this? Because we know that I can love that tree, but if you're bringing the grade up two feet, that tree's never going to survive. So I think that's a big topic for me to discuss, and I would like some input on, on that proximity of, of the drive-through in relationship to the site. The other piece is, is I know we're talking round and round that the likelihood and the response and what the traffic study might bring us to, but you know, one of our measures here about you know, looking at a PUD is detrimental impact of you know, surrounding areas. And I feel like that's an important piece for us to at least have a formal review on or response before we further deliberate, no matter how positive we feel about this this evening. That's just my feelings. I'm, I'm open to other processes. Um, but it seems like, you know, if that's something we require of everything else, you know, that should be some facts we have in front of us this evening before we just say, Yep, I agree, right, or, or hope that there isn't, because maybe there is something that, that we need to ask for in addition. Um, you know, going back to the conditional rezone of the past, right, we said that asterisk because of the proximity to Walden Road that, yep, it probably isn't going to get much better, right, but we want to also mitigate that risk um, moving forward with whatever proposed uses might be there. So. I'm in support, please don't you know, take that as, as shooting the whole thing down, but obviously we're up here to do our due diligence too. So um, I know that gives some, some comments. Um, the last piece would be is, you know, I know there's some comments about, um, so reduce setbacks of, of uh, some of the drives and things. Um, the T turnaround was another thing I wrote down. Um, you know, yes, I would, I would want to have moving forward, I think no matter what condition we have to, to make sure that the, the, you know, do I believe the concept is eligible? Do I believe, you know, there's, it, it's, 
it, it's in theory the density fits, um, but I think moving forward our, our conditions also need to improve just kind of that asterisk of making sure we're, we're being smart with drainage and runoff in this parcel too. So um, I guess to kind of circle back, would like some discussion on the uh, drive-through uh, area and then also the thoughts on proceeding, not ex proceeding with, uh, without having our formal review of the traffic study that was submitted. Thoughts? The traffic study was and <clears throat> continues to be, the traffic continues to be mm -hmm. major, and I made tick marks. <clears throat> it, it got brought up a lot. Negative, there's a lot of yep. tick marks for traffic, <clears throat> and I do think that um, with all the positivity that's come from the changes, I do agree that that has to be, um, that we need to have the opportunity to fully review those 153 pages of something. Um, yeah. <laughs> Not me, but fun, isn't it? <laughs> Sam, um, um, I think sorry, that sorry. that needs. No, I was just going to say that, oh, and then figuring done. out that that turnaround for um, the fire um, mm -hmm. for the fire trucks is important. And to be clear, you know, there's there's usually components and, and items that get to be worked through with future steps of this. Um, I think that's where conditions come into to the comment. Um, you know, we, we agree bigger picture. You know, the final grading and something is, is things that will come. But I think if it is a, a huge kind of make or break or it's not possible, then yes, that would maybe break our initial thoughts. Go ahead, Mr. Sam. Uh, let me just say that I think that this development, this per concept development, is uh, much more appealing than what we've seen uh, in the past. Um, I do like the mixed use nature of it. I think that the four different components of this development definitely, in my opinion, provide benefits. Um, I, I will say that traffic probably is my biggest concern. It is, it is good to see that they're not routing cars in and off of Walden. Um, I live off 24. I know what 24 is like that. And um, the, the fact of the matter is we we're seeing a lot of proposed developments up and down 24. If it's not this, it's bad. It's going to get bad plus the other developments. I mean, it just, it is what it is. Um, recognizing that, in my opinion, this is a responsible, well thought out concept. And, it, you know, the concerns about the turnaround with the fire department, again, later on in the process, it's my understanding that those things typically are, are figured out one way or the other. And I think that the developer and everybody recognizes that, the, you know, fire access and so forth is critical to any development. And, and they'll, I think we'll figure that out. Um, I, I do think that this is a uh, much more appealing uh, uh, development concept than what we've seen in the past for this, this particular area. Understood. Additional comments? Mr. Chair, is that one? You still have the windmill? Last time I was there, it was still there. That was about okay. a month ago. And I, I, uh, I jotted that down, actually, when that comment got made, because if we could preserve that to keep that water flowing, that would be pretty good. Thank you. Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Landis. I just wanted to circle back to the stream relocation. Uh, I do stand corrected. The previous uh, Classic Car Club site plan did uh, show the stream relocation uh, as as included on this plan uh, before you tonight. So my apologies. So this is a quick visual of that. This is the previously approved, but basically this route here is where it was flowing to. And it, if you look on Google Maps or an existing site survey today, you see it flows kind of like this. So it was already being rerouted before, and now it's basically being rerouted the same direction right here. It's just literally was a layer on the engineer's Understood. Um, <clears throat> thoughts on drive-through proximity. Well, I'm just. Mr. If I could ask just a quick ahead. Yep. question, one of your uh, points. So you mentioned residential setback. Now, does that have to do with the fact that the north property is zoned residential? Even uh, land use is yeah. So the required setback to residential for a drive-through, I believe, in a special land use is 100 feet. So that's, that's kind of the key criteria there. I mean, there is the 35-foot residential setback to the residential units, right? That's we're a, a deviation. But 
Um, I think that's kind of my, that seemed, it seems like we're kind of scrunching that up close and, you know, without understanding other mitigation measures or anything like that, you know, it's a concern. And is the, is the deviation with our own residential or are you saying? To the north, to, to fellow, to adjacent property owners, right? So it's, it would be to a residential property line, correct? So. Just for comparison, if that, if that parcel was zoned something different, let's say it was actual institutional zoning or commercial zoning, what would the setback be in that case? I believe the setback is 50. So the underlying zoning is R2, but the current use is the church, of course, so while it technically is residential zoning, practically speaking, it's functioning as a commercial business or an institutional business, so I think right. the 50-foot requirement should be considered along with this topic. But certainly we'd like to maximize it. I mean, the, the challenge we have is we're, we're pushing from each end to try to fit all the pieces in uh, with the necessary setbacks and, and meeting all the ordinance. And I know that's the challenge every developer faces, so I'm not looking for sympathy. But, um, you know, these minor tweaks that we can make, I think, can improve the overall orientation and um, you know, allow us to uh, come closer to those setbacks. I mean, one specifically that I'd ask for feedback on is the extra five feet on the residential uh, being 30 as opposed to 35. You know, that area behind those residences is intended to remain as natural and undisturbed as possible. Um, and so our intent was um, to provide a 30 foot setback there. And, you know, of course, our hope is that that is sufficient. Are you, is there a deck or a patio or something back there? Um, are actually adjacent to those entry points. So on the, for the first floor units, the 200 square foot outdoor patio is, um, it would be like between those buildings there. You see the box? Oh, I see. Sorry. It's kind of on the side. I have new glass. Driveway. Um, you know, it's, it's not that I'm, I'm not open to decreasing these setbacks. It's kind of the what other measures are in place, right, to mitigate that, right? So, so we're lacking some landscaping here to just say, you know, we've spoken to proposed kind of buffers between evergreen, staggering, right, between uses on, on parcel, right, but we're kind of saying, yeah, it's going to be proposed, right, but, or, or sorry, maintained or proposed, but, you know, that's something that I think would help us come to those conclusions, um, you know, or at least to say that, you know, it's going to be a solid buffer or whatever it might have been. So. Um, I guess bigger picture of, of just proceeding this evening without the formal review of the traffic study in favor or not, what's our, our thoughts on that right now? I mean, how, how long will it take? You said a, a, I mean, it would, it, I mean, it would still be. It would, it, I mean, it's not going to be this evening. Right. I, well, I know. I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, you know, it'd have to be our next meeting or it, would, it seems like it could be ready by for our next packet. Is that doable, Mr. Landis? It certainly uh, will be ready and, and will be reviewed, and I, I don't want you to convey that I'm diminishing the importance of it. I most certainly, mm -hmm. I can just spoil the ending for you because I've read it. Um, it's going to say that the existing conditions warrant a traffic signal. It's going to analyze the warrant signals for that and describe how each of those are met. Then it's going to look at background conditions, which <clears throat> add population growth for the next two years. Then it's going to look at the future conditions with our development built. And then, of course, it's going to compare the signalization and the unsignalized. And what it shows is that even with our project built and the addition of the signalization, the then traffic conditions will be better than they are today without the site built. In a nutshell, that's how it's going to read. Now, again, would love to guarantee a light. I know we can get back into this. Um, it is... I mean, we would love nothing more than to come back here and say that we got a light approved at them dot, and there's going to be one there, and talk about a community benefit. Um, but we, we just don't know that yet. So I think it's, it's in the Planning Commission's um, eyes, you know, to consider how to manage that situation, given that it's not this entity that controls the outcome. Understood. I think some of my deal is just the importance of us and traffic reviews in our process. It isn't so much about... Um, you know, that, that might change. It's just the opportunity for our professional review of that. Um, so that, that's where I'm hung up on. I understand what 
the writing on the wall. I know how to read a traffic study, but at the same time, we have a process here, right, and, and a, a duty and uh, on these these projects and this process. So, yeah. but I'm I'm open to discussion, right? I'm not trying to to speak one way or the other. It just is a component where, you know, where we we spoke to, and it sounds like OHM was trying to pull together some thoughts for the meeting, but you know, we wouldn't mark this plan as substantially complete without that together, right? And I don't want to delay the process, but at the same time, it's a pivotal piece to a, a PUD, so. I, I'm going to agree with that. It's, again, we've, traffic, 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 we need to look at that. And, and, and I'm in, I'm in, I'm in agreement that we should not make any sort of, you know, decision on it until we have all of the pieces of the puzzle. But in the meantime, may I ask some questions about hours of operation? Um, and maybe potentially even, so hours of operation for the car club um, and the restaurant, what is your um, like capacity for the restaurant? How many, how many patrons are you expecting? And then for the Big B, it's, um, what's the average? Or a big B drive through. Um, just that's, I mean, something to think about along with um, traffic stuff. So, regarding the restaurant, the restaurant seats about 100 people um, on the main floor. Um, patio, do you know how many people? 25, 30. Um, and then the mezzanine uh, potentially will seat 30 to 50. Probably veer more on the 30 side because I probably will have the office up there as well. Um, <clears throat> hours uh, of operation uh, during the week for the restaurant, we would potentially be open 4 to 10 um, on Fridays, 4 to 11, Saturdays, and Sundays would be open for brunch. So we would be open probably 9 to 11 on Saturdays, and Sundays we'd probably resume our normal brunch hours, uh, nine to three or four. Um, Big B, we haven't got that together yet, but I'm assuming potentially our hours would be open, we'd probably be open like at six, probably two, eight, most days of the week. Maybe, uh, maybe on Sundays, Saturdays, maybe a little earlier, six p.m. Um, regarding traffic flow for the Big B, I think hours of operation is kind of our main goal. Like seating yeah, capacity like, was more or less, is it, is it, is it just going to be kind of a touch and go about the size of a Starbucks that we're familiar with, you know, about 20 seats, something like that? Oh, or? yeah. I would okay. say the cafe would probably have max of probably 20 seats in there. So. Okay. Okay. Um, and, yeah, the cafe <clears throat> Starbucks. But because of the road um, that's being developed, there will not be that backup and tra traffic that mm -hmm. we see on the clear road right now with us, the way it's being developed. And built in the parking lot itself. So. Okay. And then the car club use, is there is that a public function, purely private hours of operation for that? Fully private, so the concern of events or anything like that is not necessarily a concern? Car club events in the parking lot? Can you step up to the podium, please? Sorry. State your name and address. I guess if you're part of the applicant, that's fine. <laughs> name helps, though. John Kine, uh 1247 Lakeshore Boulevard. The current car club, we've had, now remember this has been during the pandemic, but we've had two inside parties, three inside parties in seven years in the current location. I actually think, Scott, you were at one of the parties. Um, and the hours of operation, it is fully secured with uh, cameras and we give the car owners keys to the building, security codes, and they can come and go 24-7. I heard one of the comments about um, loud cars. Uh, we leave that to Joe Zimmer uh, down at Culver's. He can handle the car shows, and he does a nice job with it. But we will not be having car shows like that. So. Thank you for the clarification. So private-based use. Thank you. 
I no, just wanted to get a general yeah. idea yeah, of when the traffic was going to be coming and going. very helpful. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Additional thoughts? Uh, anyone consider making a motion? Inclined to make a, we can we can make make a motion and and at least discuss right. it further. So. Uh, I move that the planning commission postpone action on PC twenty two dash thirty three plan unit development concept and eligibility plan thirty uh, three zero three zero South Lapeer Road, Sidwell zero nine two six one zero one. 021 for plan state stamped received October 20th, 2022 for the following reasons. Uh, we still have an outstanding um, report on the, the traffic study that we need to um, look at and digest. Um, uh, and uh, a T turnaround for the, um, the fire department for approval. And just one clarification on the motion. You said PC 22-33, you intended okay. 39, correct? As All right, PC 22-39. Okay, thank you. Do I have a support on the motion? Support. Or by Mr. Walker. Further discussion? So the only question I have is uh, when, when the applicant comes back before us, um, after we have a chance to look at the traffic study and uh, They'll have an opportunity to make some some changes to their to their concept plan. No, well, what well, that we weren't we're not encouraging necessarily a whole other submittal. It would be the review of what was submitted. Um, if there are going to be additional conditions or items that they bring forth for us to consider as in addition to the submitted plans, that would be the current thought. Because there wouldn't be time for ever, all the other reviews to reoccur and be get resubmitted with time. Plan, their plan is to come back pretty quick. Correct. With this plan, with with our reviews okay. complete. Okay. And then if there were to be additional items that maybe meet our, our discussion points, right, they could present that and we could say as presented or, you know, as with, within so that. that that's, my, that's that's yes. what I'm getting at. If, if they want to address any of these outstanding concerns. That. Yep. You know, whether, no matter what it is, if, if they think they can tweak the plan accordingly. That's all I'm asking. We'll see that next time. I, I agree with the chairman that um, we'd like to be back in two weeks. Hopefully I'll check with Tammy and Lynn just to see if mm -hmm. we can get on that meeting. But we'd like to be back as soon as possible, absent of another submission. Uh, but if we're unable to be on the next meeting, then perhaps we would just resubmit and be on in two meetings from now with an updated plan and the traffic study. But our preference is to come back as soon as we can. I would agree with those. Yes. Back with Tammy. Yep. So, um, yeah, I mean, if, if there's some, some thoughts and at least some of those items that we can clarify some additional information or as submitted, I think that would be helpful and maybe that potentially um, mitigates some of the conditions that might be brought forth. So uh, we have a uh, motion on the table. Give me just a sec. I'll, I w you, you will have an opportunity to speak with public comment. So, um, so we have a motion on the table to postpone um, for the project in front of us uh, right now uh, for the, the finding of fact for the opportunity for OHM to review the uh, traffic study that was recently submitted for our review before de further deliberation. It was supported by Mr. Walker. Further discussion as a planning commission. Okay, Seeing none, public discussion on the motion, which can include you. for the restaurant we will be closed on Mondays and Tuesdays understood so it would only be Wednesday through Friday that we'd be open for starting at four o'clock okay thank you for that clarification okay with that said uh, any other public uh, discussion on the motion all right can I have a roll call vote please I have a question. yes Lynn go ahead I have a question so do you want to see revised plans back or not or is this just the traffic study that we're what? we're seeking that we're we're seeking the postponement for the ability for the traffic study to come forth so we weren't asking for submitted plans. We're suggesting that if there were clarifications for in, during a future presentation for, for, to, to address some of our concerns, we're appropriate with that, but we weren't trying to get into a whole revised plan at this point. Thank you. So, roll call, please. Reckon? Yes. St. Henry? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. 
Ginjo? Yes. Walker? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Motion carries to postpone. Okay, thank you very much. We uh, thank you for your presentation and uh, we look forward to further deliberating here at a date really soon. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, all right, that leads us to item 7D on our agenda this evening mm. to speak about uh, meeting dates for our 2023. Can't believe that we're actually talking about it's going to be 2023. Um, they were presented in your packet this evening. Our typical uh, regular meetings as followed uh, is a, a proposed resolution. As, as always, we meet on the, the first and third Wednesdays of each month um, in beginning on January 4th and ending on January 20th. Um, if um, bigger picture, we want um, any dates uh, potentially considered for review, um, we could talk about amending those. If not, we can adopt as, as, as I guess, presented. So I have a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yep. Um, I move the Planning Commission approves the 2023 PC meeting dates resolution as presented and forwards to the Board of Trustees for adoption. Support. Right. Motion support by, uh, motion by Mrs. Gingell, support by Mrs. Urbanowski, further discussion. Seeing none, any public discussion on the motion? Can I have a roll call vote, please, Lynn? Gingell? Yes. Rackin? Yes. Henry? Yes. Sorry. Urbanowski? Yes. Walker? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have no unfinished business. Do we have any public comments? Seeing no one left in the audience. Uh, we have no communications this evening, and I'll turn it over to our planner for the report on the future of transportation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as uh, you may have been aware, our last um, report was also uh, regarding transportation, and so this is just a continuation of that. Um, to talk about the importance of uh, the evolution of EV, electronic vehicles, um, and how they're being implemented throughout the country and world. Um, and just discusses um, some points about uh, getting incentives for those. Um, one of the um, main points of the, the report is talking about uh, implementing those into the CIP, which just helps to encourage um, the community that... Uh, the commission and uh, community leadership is interested in um, at least keeping it on the radar of the community to implement uh, EVs, electronic vehicles, and electronic, electronic vehicle infrastructure um, and to explore it by way of the CIP, Capital Improvement Project. So, pretty short and sweet. Um, I don't know if you have any questions on that or discussion points. All right. And I want to introduce um, <laughs> Jill Bain. Thanks. Part two of the planner report. Uh, we have a new uh, planner in the team. Uh, my name is Jill Bain, and I am the partner in charge of the planning group at Giffels Webster. Um, Rod Arroyo is sorry that he did not make the last meeting that your meeting was canceled because he would have, I think, preferred telling you himself about his moving from, um, he, we were partners together over the planning group, but um, moving into partner emeritus status. So he's still working with our team, um, which we're very happy for, um, but he will not be attending any more night meetings. And so um, our team is, is shifting and adjusting uh, to meet that uh, little bit of an increase of workload for us. But um, just my background, I have 25, over 25 years of planning experience, and I've been a planning consultant for 14 um, working with a variety of communities of different shapes and sizes from small towns to townships um, and have been sort of in the background hearing a lot of what's been going on here in Orion and it's very exciting. Um, I love bringing my dog out to the dog park here uh, so I do come out quite a bit for that. That's just a fantastic amenity for the whole area um, and delighted to be here. So thank you. It was a very interesting meeting and I think really my favorite part was reading the emojis into the <laughs> record. That was <laughs> the best. So thank you for that. Awesome. Thank welcome. you and welcome. Uh, we have no committee reports at this evening, uh, no future public hearings. Uh, welcome to the team. Thank you uh, for joining us. So we're uh, looking forward to working with you. With that, I'll turn it over to Ms. Kindle if you have any comments. Uh, no comments, just welcome. Mr. Walker? Number of comments, welcome, first of all. Secondly, the uh, uh, 
Library silent auction, holiday auction basket ends this Saturday. If you haven't been there to put a bid on, I think 58 very wonderful baskets uh, that, that all the profits go to support the library. And also tomorrow is the opening of the Orient Art Center holiday market running from six to nine. And you're all cordially invited to stop by there for holiday gifts. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Henry. Uh, no comments other than welcome. Mrs. Urbanowski. Um, I would like to thank Rod, who I know is watching somewhere, um, for, uh, for the two years that I've been here. Um, he's been a pleasure to work with. So, and welcome. Um, and that is all I have to say. Fantastic, Mr. Bracken, <laughs> nothing for me. Uh, thank you, Lynn, for uh, stepping in this evening. I know this is not a role you typically play, so thank you very much. You did, did a fine job. So Lynn is always working on all of our packets and things, but in the backgrounds and doesn't always attend our meetings. She used to, but doesn't anymore. She gets, gets off the night shift anymore. Uh, all right, that leads us to our last and most important topic, adjournment. We have 925. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Not everyone at once, everyone. Uh, do I have support? Support. Support by Mrs. Gingell. All those in favor, please stay with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries at 926.